Hello guys, the Night Flyer here. Now before we start uh, this video series, whatever it's gonna be, I want to let people know that I've already played Doki Doki on the channel before, so I'll probably link the uh, playlist in the description below. I'm gonna mainly be checking out the new stuff in DDLC Plus, so yeah, thanks for listening. But anyway, with that warning out of the way, uh, welcome guys to Doki Doki Literature Club. It doesn't say plus in the game, but um, it is plus. I guarantee it. I think we'll go with Joseph because last time I went with Joseph, I think. So, yeah. Also, just to let you guys know, I most likely I'm going to just skip like a lot of the same shit in this because I literally am playing this just to see if I can get into the new content. Already, like, I know we're not even doing anything new yet, but everything just looks crispier. Everything just looks nicer. Hey, Sayori. Welcome back. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. I never also meant, uh, mentioned at the start, but we're going to be bringing this model back for this uh, series now. I I will also most likely be doing voices for this as well, by the way. It's just, again, right now I'm not sure what's up, so. As much as I'm just skipping through this, I'm still kind of reading it, you know? And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Oh, wait, she said, uh, she she just said there, nice to meet you again. I'm actually kind of curious if that was there last time or not. Oh, yeah, okay, no, this was in last time. That scared me. I thought Monica already copped on that I was already here. But <laughs> you too, Monica. Oh, <laughs> So kawaii! God, I gotta be careful how loud I get. I just remember the windows open, but that's literally because it's so warm right now, man. See, I'm also scared to skip through too much in case I actually, like, accidentally skip new dialogue or something. It <laughs> just Monica says a line out of nowhere, and I'm like, wait, what was that? This feels weird, right? Like, I'm literally, like, I'm skipping through so much of this game that I actually had to pay for this time. It just doesn't feel right, you know? Yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Ooh, I'm sorry, but this pose in particular is starting to freak me out already. She knows. She knows why I am here. Oh. Best part of the game, hands down. You know what, I'll, I'll do everybody a favor and I'll piece the Sayori. <laughs> First one! I actually was like, okay, maybe this won't work, but it actually did. That's gas. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching this, I'm probably going to spoil a lot about the game itself. So you're probably best watching the series first or watch someone else play it before you watch me play it. Or play it yourself, because it's actually a really good game. Okay, I think I mostly got Sayori that time. I know I got a few for the other two, but I think this should be a Sayori thing. <laughs> Come on! It's not like he deserves any slack! <laughs> she reaches into her bag and pulls out a big, massive dildo! Cupcake, speak to my creative tummy. Uh, that's... It's a secret! Fortune for you, I don't care! <laughs> Could you imagine if I play the whole game, and like, the whole first part of the game is actually the, like, the original game, and then the, like, spare content stuff is actually afterwards? Ah, oh, thanks a lot, Sayori, for undoing all my fucking work! It's paid the last episode, got claimed by a company who claimed to own fucking... Your reality, even though it's not by Dan Salvato or whoever he got to make the song, you know, which is kind of bullshit. But, you know, just pointing that out. Oh, yeah, now I actually have to choose. Uh, notice the chair is already set up in the background for later. You know, what? we will go to Monica first. Don't forget this, Monica. I came to you first. <laughs> I'm always listening. Yes, let's go. I got Sayori's. Oh, I got Sayori on the good side already. Let's go. Even though I don't think it's going to matter in the end. Anyway, let's go. Okay, let's see. Is it the same? Oh. Oh, what the hell? You actually have to press, like, enter to continue or click? What? That's different. Obviously, Sayori, because I made it for her. It's a Joseph poem. Oh, continue doesn't have enter on it anymore. <laughs> oh, guys, I found a bug. I'm refunding this game. This is garbage. I forgot to do it last night. Sorry, lads. I must choose the boobish over the non-boobish. Sorry, I have terrible handwriting. I wasn't thinking that at all, but it took you a long time to read. That took me like one second to skip. What do you mean? It took me a long time to read. Man, I swear I'm, I'm just trying to remaster old moments from the game now. From the old series, should I say. I'm sorry, Natsuki. You got, you got the short end of the straw quite literally. Well, fuck off. What do you mean, Natsuki? Yes, I did. We all start somewhere, right? Sorry, I'm going to start reading lines, by the way, now, because I feel like this is different. If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. <laughs> 
painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, teach your own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Ah, see, now you bring me up in a conversation just because I said I liked it. Okay, Natsuki, I see what you're playing. But you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Joseph started showing up. And Natsuki... Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This, this doesn't, doesn't involve, involve you! <laughs> you know what? I'm, I, I could be a boring cunt and just go to Sayori again and be, like, funny. Natsuki did say she liked the poem, but I feel like she's... I don't know, man. I, I'm gonna be a dickhead right now and just choose one of these. Yeah, sorry, Natsuki. Natsuki? You're right, that I liked your poem. See? Wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Um, I understand. Yuri, uh, you're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing, no matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I, I, I see. I didn't notice that, that I... I... I'm really sorry. Oh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did! It was her that- Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized, don't you think he should too? <sighs> Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. So oh yeah, shit, I just realized. So if- Oh, so if I pick Natsuki, nobody would pick Yuri's side, right? She's trapped at this point, being defiant, only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Uh, um... Sometimes, when I'm her, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to- You know what? I'm gonna do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. Man, this is actually such a different storyline so far. I know this is probably nothing new, but I'm still reading it out anyway. Like, I don't think any less of you. W well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Joseph. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. But one more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, uh, what thing did Natsuki say? Eh, uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm, I'm gonna go make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? But yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I didn't actually think Natsuki was gonna be here. It's kind of awkward now. Man, this dialogue so shit. I'm sl I'm kind of reading it as I'm skipping it. It's so depressing, man. We're gonna have to see what the future holds. Home time again. Let's go. I should have known that Pink would go to Natsuki. Ah, I give up. Please don't make me feel. Oh shit! I ruined the line. You know, what? just just move on. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve. I deserve to feel guilty. You're right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept a revolution. Retribution. Ah! Fwap! Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as uh, Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm talking to a kid to the mall or something. Or taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Hehe. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry, is that so? Yup, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say, the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, 
The once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. I'm Sayori. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Meh? Nah, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? I know, I know. I just meant it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. Let's begin the mission. The mission? Huh? Ah, I dropped one by accident. Ah! Yeah! Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Oh, wow, 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 wow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Sorry, I, as a person who plays Titan in Destiny 2, I'm staring at the crayons with a uh, <laughs> delicious intent. Where would I even find ice around this time? Ah, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, so here it makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. Damn, that's a big apple juice bottle to have in a vending machine. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, baka. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Now if I hide it under my bangs? Ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about to- Uh, Jesus Christ, sorry, let me restart that sentence. Good timing, I was just about to- Oh my god, Joe Reed! Okay, let me turn down the music. I think the music's slightly distracting me. Good timing, I was just about to- What? Why can't I say this sentence? Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing poems. Eh, Sayori, your forehead. Eh, she's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. <laughs> just no comment. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything you needed? Uh-huh, I have it right- Huh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I FORGOT ALL THE STUFF! C calm down, Sayori. I have it all <laughs> Oh my god. I have it all right here. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Joseph. Ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. You two are kind of like a dynamic duo. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Oh, 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 I did, I don't, okay, I clicked Sayori apparently. I clicked space by accident, skipping it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Uh, uh? What? Stop thinking weird things, Baka. <laughs> Sorry, every time I say Baka now, I just think, like, huh. Sussy Baka. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm another kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. S -s 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 Sorry. Uh, I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. And now, Yuri. Sorry I left you on the back burner today, Yuri, but it is what it is. It's a very intimate, intimate exercise. God, I, I, I was going to have another moment there about trying to say intimate. <laughs> it's about expressing your feelings. It's about being intimate with yourself. <laughs> ah, should I? Should I? Ah, no, because I know what's going to happen, man. I don't want it to happen, but I also don't want to keep choosing the same options over and over, like, for every playthrough, man. I'm sorry. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's, let's save it again whilst I remember. It's bad, but I'm, it's bad that I'm starting to remember what some of these words for her is. Who should I show my poem to first? Honestly, I was thinking of changing it up a bit. It's just simple as that. Just that. That's the change. Ooh. Ah, man, it's depressing. It's so depressing. It's just depressing. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? How about how Sayori's been a little off today? Yeah? Did she tell you something? Well, 
Joseph, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? M of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. All right. Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It'd be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye out on her. Humans are two-dimensional creatures. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. It's almost like having your own little liturgy cloak. Don't you think? Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe? <laughs> What'd she say, Monica? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of festival preparations. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can... Uh, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. No, calm down, you're not Aqua. Heh, <laughs> that just leaves you, Joseph. The one that is truly useless. You literally just said... Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. I can't believe this. Yuri's gonna be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything from Sayuri since she left the club the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayuri said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayuri's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayuri before Yuri comes over. God, entering Sayuri's house with a dark screen just brings back bad memories. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it meant to be such a nice moment in the game as well, I'm just skipping it so fast. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I just, I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I'd known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. <laughs> I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Wait, don't look at... I snatch Yuri's wrist, which it was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. God, oh my god, jeez, I actually just spaced out there for two seconds. <laughs> I was looking at a particular area, let's just say that. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Uh, is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, that would be really neat. Why did I stutter so much? You can even feel it permeate through your body. I'm sorry, I, I keep reading the text, but for some reason my eyes keep making me have an out-of-body experience like whilst reading it. I think it's just the way my monitor is shaped. Like. <laughs> is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Probably the latter. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Joseph! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, uh? Without warning, Yuri puts her finger in my her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. <laughs> Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh... Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yeah, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. 
Wait, I just realized this happens to Natsuki as well, except, well, less blood. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. D did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew it would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so hentai, Joseph. Sorry, I, I just, there's some words I can replace, but I won't replace them all. Yuri giggles shyly. Uh, Yuri calling me hentai? I've no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online recently. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolour paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the ta tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, you'll be too diluted. Taking your advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips and bring it back to my room. Yuri? Uh, yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. <sighs> see, the moment she was like, I saw her like that on screen, I was like, oh, okay, wait, my stomach's pitting here. It's telling me something like, uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. Th there's nothing wrong, so let's mix the pain. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I, I thought we could do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a, a gradient across the banner, starting with the colours for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. Across the banner. And the inspirational quote, put it on screen. That's what we're going to have on our banner. We can hang it out on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me, if you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colours across the banner to serve as a colour guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolours feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah, it's so sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? N no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, oh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here, I pat down Yuri's face with a neck with the towel. <sighs> Is something wrong? Honestly, yeah, I feel like the background's completely different. Is that just me? Because I swear, I've definitely seen this image. It's just, the background feels completely different. Maybe it is just a HD overall, like, thing, like, taking effect.
Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. But wait, uh, just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's cheek. Or neck, sorry. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this feel dizzy feeling? I begin to feel dizzy. Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist, sending a, a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. Huh, I wonder why she's feeling lightheaded, guys. Can you tell me? I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. Now that I realize it, isn't Sayori like going to be like outside the window right now, just peeping in on us? Yo, Sayori, get in here! Come on! Don't be outside by yourself. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. It is though. It is. It is. Just shut up. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Oh, I forgot, you don't like going out. But as I stumble over my words, Jerry simply uh, smiles bashfully. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Joseph. Here he takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Phew. <laughs> Mm, it's getting a bit warm in here. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get the chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Is it Sayori? Uh? Uh, uh, hi, Joseph. Sayori? Just now we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Joseph. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course, Sayori beams. I yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori? I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well... I try staying in my room, but my oh yeah, no, okay, I'm sorry. This is gonna be horrible, but I'm gonna have to skip all of this. I can't do this, man! Okay, I, uh, again, I, as I said before the last episodes, I was being an asshole. <sighs> You'll always be my dearest friend. Ah, oh, I can't do this, man. I, I see. Siori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori? It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, don't worry about these stupid feelings. I, I know I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down this path. That's why I came here. So I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I just wanted to go back the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Joseph. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loud as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if, if I should have done something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm, I'm going, going to give it everything, everything I've got. Sayori will be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Oh, fuck, there's no poem. No, there's no poem. There's no poem. Oh, 
And there's no music as well, man. You should take a little responsibility for her, Joseph. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Oh, don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Oh, God, the pamphlets. God, I'm not going to repeat it, but man. <laughs> no! Stop! I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. This is this, this was hard enough when I was editing this series originally, man. Stop. Stop. I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh! This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. End. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's already reset itself for me. Back into the literature club once again. That girl is me, My neighborhood and good friends since we were children. That's a different place, that glitch, not like last time. Start a new game. Whew. Hey, Monica, how are you doing? Yeah. Oh, geez, stop, don't do that. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I'm not have a gun at my head forcing me to say this. Please help me. Stop. I couldn't even read what was in between. You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Stare at this dot to reveal a special message. I'm staring at it. Oh, okay, no, this is- nah, that's creeping me out. Thanks, Monica. Yeah, and look, there's only two of them now. Oh, no, they- they- yeah, no, they've basically gotten rid of all of things' words. They're gone. Like, they don't exist now. Hey, your, your face was glitching just there. Natsuki, don't do that. Is the background moving yet? I feel like it is. Yeah, it's moving ever so slightly, I can tell. Oh, well, Natsuki's rummaging around in the closet. Ah, uh, I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Oh, wait, I've... Yeah, no, I've done this now that I remember. Oops. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, fuck, no, stop. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. Guys, shield yourselves. As I turn up the volume of my headset. I swear this music changed for this. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poem yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. I don't- Oh, I keep pressing space! Fuck it, it doesn't matter. I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Monica, you're listening to me right now, aren't you? Stop it! Please! Let me go! Can I actually save right now? Thank you. Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point! Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only thing cute about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself in that edge, Yuri. Oh my bad, you already do that, don't you? Did, did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on, let Joseph hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, suddenly Yuri turns to me as if she just noticed I was standing there to the fucking static on the screen. Joseph, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Oh, they actually move into each other now as well. Hi, Monica. How you doing? Um, hey, Joseph. Why don't we step outside for a bit? I love that she was self-aware of the text as well. Sorry, I just needed to reenact that little part. It's one of the gas points of the series. Oh, the, the... <laughs> Jeez, okay, um, how are you doing, Yuri? You're split in half. I don't think I've ever seen this before. <laughs> ah, hi, Yuri! I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little bit. If I'm being real here, I can't even tell if that was an actual glitch or a bug, or if, like, that was intentional. She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going. Oh yeah, wait, fuck, in this act, she pulls me straight away from Natsuki, so even if I wanted to go with Natsuki to stay away from the crazy danger, like, it doesn't matter, like. Hey, okay, I heard a glitch and I didn't really see much. You know, I'm kind of scared to go to Natsuki. I think this is that part, but I'm gonna go to her anyway. Huh, well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I'd be completely pissed. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I've read this. And then it's just that and... <laughs> Stop! Stop! I'm speeding it up. 
Stop, stop. Ah! Oh, the, oh my god, the fucking... Uh, the, it still gets to my fucking spine. I love the way Natsuki just cracked her neck right in front of me and, like, shammied over to me. And, like, I'm still continuing, like... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Whew, you've unlocked a spell. Yes, please, thank you. I don't think I've read this one. Uh, a dream. I was wandering an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost, looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of intermediate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Oh, my mouse! Get off my mouse, Monica, please, I beg. It's the only thing I've left, wait. Okay, <laughs> just leave it outside of the screen. It doesn't count anymore. Okay, I'll leave it here in the bottom corner so you guys... Uh, yeah, I'll leave it in this chair so you guys can see it. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Was that Monica? Oh, it was Monica! Oh yeah, I just realized the top's going nuts. Ooh, okay. Uh, that's never happened before. Oh my god, that fucking tripped me up. Oh, the particle effects look so much nicer here, man. Such a pity this is gonna be such a fucked up scene after this. Oh god. Yeah, um... Monica! 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 Okay, thank god. Uh, let's try Natsuki again, because uh, Natsuki's the one I actually want to talk to right now, because she's the only sane one left. Oh jeez, I forgot. We're back! Um, hey Yuri, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. God, the HD version of this just looks so much more creepier, man. Holy shit. Uh, yes or no? Fine, yes, go on. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. You're telling me, Yuri. See, the thing is, right? I'm, I apologize in advance, Monica, but... If you give me the freedom of choice, Oh, it doesn't even matter when you're underneath. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try and click someone else. Yeah, that's what happens when you click someone else. Uh, yeah, Monica! Yes! I wanna pick Monica, let's go! Monica! I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are! Pulling Joseph away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It'd be really beneficial to your mental health. Oh my god. Oh, 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 I don't know if you guys hear that properly, but I hear these voices now. Or not voices in my head, but like in the game, I can hear these like, or I heard these whispers at the start. I'm sorry, Yuri. Oh, I, I didn't even get to choose. Oh my god. Oh. Let's go! Thanks, Monica. You came in clutch here with the skip option. Oh, I can't even skip or save or anything right now. You didn't even need to delete Natsuki. Natsuki didn't even do anything wrong at the end. She had the most perfect fucking reaction ever. Like, okay, yeah, actually, now that I realize it, I probably should just do that. I'm sorry, Monica. We gotta speed this up here. Oh, this hurts! I'm sorry, Monica. I'm really sorry. Yeah, sorry, Monica. We're speed running this shit. The background here looks really nice. I know this is meant to be a depressing moment, but the background actually looks pretty cool. This is like an imposter you. Ruin everything, achievement unlocked. Thanks, game. I definitely haven't read all this already as well. Meow! Fucking speed through this! Meow! Well, it doesn't matter, Siri, I'm sorry. Ah. <sighs> oh, there's subtitles. I don't feel like I deserve this ending, man. I literally have just skipped through the entire game. Like, I think on YouTube, someone was saying there's like seven different stories. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four. <laughs> We're still missing a lot. Yeah, let's do this. Finally, new content. Ah, 
after the hell I've gone through, I'm finally... Oh shit, this is Neo. Oh man, that piano hit when Monica appeared on screen. Now I don't even have to consider you a threat. You're literally just normal now. That's weird. Okay, everyone. The literature club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Ugh, I missed the debate club. Who knew it would be so difficult to start a new club? I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only member of the literature club. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, do you like literature? Maybe nobody is into literature enough to pick it up over their other club interests. I can't just rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them a vision. A vision. But what kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought, but before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. So this is probably going to be like an origin story of how Sayori met up with, like, Monica at the start. Um, hello? Yeah, see, I knew it. Suddenly, a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I never do that. <laughs> is this the napping club? No, this is... Monica pauses suddenly, embarrassed to admit that this is, in fact, the literature club. This is the literature club. Yay! I thought I got it wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry. It was like so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize. I do that all the time. Oh? Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everyone? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you, that means I get to be vice president! M wait, vice president? Um, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. Maybe I should be president. Now you're making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori. Oh, okay. Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening to not be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president thing too. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure of that. Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry that this isn't like a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica, that's such a cool name. Oh, uh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the flyer on her desk and realizes that her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with some new ideas to re recruit club members. I can do that. Cool. And I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. You know, like, a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy! <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Zuri suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug, then lets go. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Siori whispers loudly. Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy. Monica laughs. Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited! I'm gonna think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. A day passes and the time comes from the literature club. Monica and Sayori to reconvene. As President Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive to the club room, but she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining. No, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday, but I'm getting kind of worried. 
Sorry I'm late. I'm here. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sarah spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, mm. Take my hand. Take my hands. Take me forward. Take me to your dream land. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hands, take me forward. Take me to your dream land. Hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Aori? Of course. Wait, wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper. Uh, I wasn't ready to share that yet. I'm so embarrassed. Monica flips over the paper. Written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now, do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good as it as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a week after I write it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something like that. Aww. You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to like set a good example or whatever. Um, you know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems we write and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people usually, but you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah. I think that's helping me form a more cohesive version of for the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too. I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorming together? My brain stormed so hard. It was like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. <laughs> Sayori, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. I was hungry. But it's a good idea, isn't it? Um, let me think about this. I mean, when would we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like, when they come into the club. What if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm, like, kind of worried that you would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know. Wrong kinds? People would just come for the cupcakes and then leave. Ah, nobody would do that. That would be mean. But you know, I want to find people who are really into the literature, even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list. Hunt for people reading books. I don't get it. Like going around to the school and finding people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch, and we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How would we know if they're just reading for fun? Um, well, we could ask them, but then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them up on the wall. I'd definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful! <laughs> I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What would we tell people when handing them out? I don't want to just be like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if you told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? A vision for the club? Okay, Sayori, pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who's getting the flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Um, probably like, literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's a reference to me, isn't it? What the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Okay, what if I said that we like, do group reading and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. And that's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Uh, this sucks. Why is this so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways that you can't normally do when you're just 
doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like, intimate. Yeah. How do we get that across to people? We could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with us. Okay, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all my things in the classroom. I must have gotten too excited and rushed here. Silly me. Rushed? But you weren't... Ah, uh, never mind. Did you want to get your stuff then? I'll forget it if I don't get do it now. <laughs> well, I'll wait for you then. Okay. It'll only take a second. Sherry dashed out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her notes on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Wow, that's lame. Monica! Uh, you startled me. Sorry, but it's something important. On the way to my cl classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing her homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um, well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from the desk. Then the two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. This way! You don't have to run. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom and lowers her voice to a whisper. See? In there! Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president, and I would probably scare her anyway. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath and timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why? What happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom and she didn't even look up from her book. So I just kind of just left the flyer on her desk and walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute, but I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? The two head back to the club room, Sayuri feeling rather accomplished and Monica still feeling a bit embarrassed by the encounter. Upon returning, Monica and Sayuri resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various kinds of recruitment tactics uh, from professional to silly. After going through Sayuri's list with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end up in a better spot than from where they began. Well, I wouldn't say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we're starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Sayori appears at a sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. That's so cute. <laughs> I thought it was a little over dramatic, but Siri pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What do you mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like I could tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah, yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest at everything. So I don't think it's that bad. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of it deviating from that. Division. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think, then shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sayori taps her finger against the sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course, but I'm here to help you. Monica returns Sayori's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really gonna make this the best club ever. They say that, but like, you know, replay the entire Doki Doki series from start to finish. Sayori nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air conditioner. The only movement in the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sayori breaks the moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me, you're president. <laughs> In that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too! Sayori beams and grabs her things. You can go on ahead. I need a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait. That's alright. I just want some alone time. 
Um, in that case, Sayoriki... Sayoriki? What? Sayori waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck! Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori spins her way out of the club room. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decides it was something she probably needed to write about now. The club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that, because it's the window to the real person inside us all. Underneath, the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be perfect. Um, Monica suddenly notices a folder on the floor by her desk. <laughs> Imagine if that was like, <laughs> it's just the Windows folders. It's like the folders for the game, that'd be gus. Did Sayori leave this behind? I hope it doesn't have her homework in it. Worried Monica opens the folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent. It's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me. All for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck. Every day. Pluck, pluck, pluck. So pretty in my hair. Pluck, pluck, pluck. You're going to die, and you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the prosperous field, is it's a barren wasteland. wasteland. The fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy, and that is why I've decided I must become the flower. Oh, what the? Wait, Sayori? Another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Sayori's going through these kinds of feelings, and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around? What kind of club president does that? This whole time, I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. Oh my god, this is sounding way too similar to what I was saying back when Sayori hung herself. Please, though, no, don't do this, man. Please don't. So much for the stupid vision. Sayori enters the club room with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Uh, huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sayori responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. Where's Yuri's fucking aroma candles? This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do all of this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy, so if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay, I understand that you don't want me to worry, and I think I'll be able to put this aside so that we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Write the way into your hearts, or whatever. So, I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. 
It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise you if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? What about the recruitment? It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know? <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first and then make it sound pretty later. It's like, it's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. I'm sorry, but my throat is starting to hurt doing Sayori's voice. That's why Monica's voice sounds so much more like mine. Just calmer. Oh, but if Natsuki was here, my voice would be dead, man. But it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught up in how it sounds that I forgot about what's really actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out you idiot after she writes it down. No, keep it! What? Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not. But the point is that you're not supposed to police your feelings, right? Be as dramatic as you want. <laughs> but I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites, you idiot. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote down that I'm mad at myself for, and then I did the exact same thing anyway. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you, and thanks. I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues to exercise jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write down without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew! Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it, but it's also kind of liberating. Hmm? I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I'd have to try really, really hard at it, but I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing with you. Sayori beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay! Let's do it! Monica and Sayori proceed to their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment plan, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is a printout of the revisited Literature Club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one, but the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the centre of the flyer. Right the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Monica and Sayori had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be the president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight of Monica's shoulders becomes heavier. The bait club was always about rigid structure, formulating art airtight points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. 
I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself. For real. Marco pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. Let me guess, there's going to be a big black blob of ink. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Told you. Monica lifts her pen and starts at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her fingers across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. <sighs> Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a, a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes, This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. Cause she's sleeping again, man. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi. Monica hears Sayori approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Um, me too. You too? The new flyer looks good. You've been working so hard. On the club. But also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's just it's so hard to just be vulnerable. Um... Siri takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down and stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. I'm getting shivers of the original game again, man. Sometimes I want to die. Sayori? This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So, if I can do it, then can you too? Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Siri takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now, my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't, you don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of that promise yesterday. I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sarah must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you could just be happy instead? So I never tell anybody about these kinds of thoughts I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone will worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sierra pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sierra pauses again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But another part of me, I think I just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence. And our relationship, <clears throat> and our friendship, sorry, <laughs> doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club Oh fuck, I skipped past it, I'm sorry. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Malka steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, I could, I'm actually crying. 
I can feel the tears in my eyes. Oh my god. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Though their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all the days that have passed, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she could, as hard as she can, to start speaking. To say the things she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. <laughs> I'm so worthless. I'm worthless. And everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just a convenience. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything and it just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. And I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to an overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you put up with me and I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loosens her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now, so she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft as gentle. This isn't putting up with you, it's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows Sayori said it herself, that the thoughts Sayori experiences are ones that don't belong and Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value to me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have ever happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision, and you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sayori doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her head and wipes her eyes. <sighs> Jesus Christ, that was intense, man. Oh my God. Ah, oh, they definitely needed that drawing there to convey that thing, man. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are, if that's what makes you happy. Um, thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Sayori nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course it will always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Sayori starts suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me tired and hungry. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I could say that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Let's hope I can get the voice to be better, because I'm listening back to some of the footage and some of the voice work that I'm doing is so bad, man. It's not like it used to be. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Yuri, I knew it was you. It, it definitely wouldn't have been that suki like Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She very conspicuously, conspicuously uh, mouths to Monica. It's her! It's the girl! It's true, the girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had come across reading alone in the classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? 
Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Siori continues to fail, containing her excitement. It's happening. Oh my god. Thank you so much for coming. It's sorry it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori, and we run the Literature Club. Even though it's just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I... I mean, I should be good enough. <laughs> Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh... Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to know you. Get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So, what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori. This is Monica. Sayori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes, uh, have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? Uh, I can't say I have. Oh, well, she's my favourite author. I'm on her fifth book and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. You can borrow my books, I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um... Monica stammers, caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. She glances sideways at Siori, silently asking for help. I'd love to! It sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great! I am so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Uh, you probably only need to bring one for now. Siri nervously says that, no, uh, noting, noting? Noting, noting. Yeah, noting to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. True. Okay, I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have like, no experience with fantasy. Except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. <laughs> I'm excited to get to know her more, you know? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. Yay! That's exactly what I want to do! Besides... Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her fingers against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I, I'm back. Her breath is slightly heavy, which, combined with the, her short time gone, indicates she may have ran at least part of the way. She makes her way back over to Sayori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one already on Yuri's desk. Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um... Sayori nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think, like, if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sayori while Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So, what made you decide you wanted to join the club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea that someone had, was starting a literature club, but that's my fault since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club uh, recruitment advertisements. I only found out because she... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica! Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly Yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head to herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and I 
important to even look up. So she just walked out. It took me several days just to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was. But I decided that was probably irrational. Wait, no, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just like walked out. I was actually really hoping that you'd come by. <sighs> Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons too, such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having it to meet a large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Ah, that makes me so happy! I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things I am, except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kind of other things are you into? Like, genres? I don't know, just anything. Even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. Sayuri so pauses a look of concern on her face. How about I'll tell you something I'm into and then you could tell me about something you're into? I suppose that would be okay. Okay! Well, I'm pretty into like crafty things. Like making cute little collages or decorating things. Like cards or jewellery boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off until the last minute. <laughs> so yeah, that's something kind of silly I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much. It's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So, I have to share something that I'm into right now? Sayuri nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature! <laughs> Sorry. Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. <laughs> no, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. I'm not. Oh, yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as vice president of the literature club. There, now you're stuck with me. Hey, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward having gotten cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. It's peaceful. Just nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I would have never have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do. If you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continued their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So are you two going to be starting on that book the next club meeting? That's the plan! I'm so excited. Sayori beams and Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just talked. And still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I can put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again! Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. 
Um, so Yuri tilts her head, unsure of exactly what Yuri is talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overexcited to share my books and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still, I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because... I know that you're just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well, the thing is, we don't have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff mostly, so it just sounded like something fun that we could do together. Reading your books. You know, like, as a club activity? That would be okay, right? Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Um... Siri so pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Sayuri so reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Part one of the Everlast Saga. <laughs> it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. Sorry, I'm ready now. All right, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh, it's useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. N notes? Uh, I mean, um, yes, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it will be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Sarah's joke flew completely over Yuri's head, but thinking about it, she decides that it's probably for the best that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. Oh, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No! Cher rubs her shoulders against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. Anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the more questions Sayori seems to have. But despite Sayori's expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way such that it's fun to follow along. It becomes evident that the world-building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is one that Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. How did people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are just putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry? I think there's an appendix that includes some kind of kingdom's written works like poetry and folk songs. No way! <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Sayori's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Huh, I see. Sayori jots Yuri is patient into her notes. Hey, that's for the book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of glad you're patient because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Siri so flips through the first few pages of the book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Siri speaks up again. What does vindicate it mean? Uh, well, in this context, it essentially means that he has proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Siri turns the page. Are these footnotes? Um, a lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require an explanation to be understood. Huh. 
The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression r remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayuri's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions have been reversed, with Sayuri easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now or the present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are described as describing a flashback that Baroness is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayuri rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayuri asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often and even adding to them. But a reduction in question comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. <laughs> At last, Sayuri reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sayuri takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayuri tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and to keep doing my best so I can see it the way you do. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses then shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But, I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. That's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. Yuri is left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at, and I still mess it up. What if she doesn't want to come back tomorrow? Drowned in guilt, Siri stares blankly at her desk, read with notes. The book sits next to them. Right, if she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Uh, this is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter she would have be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. For the first time, Sayuri is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Ah, why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Sari continues to wrestle with her self-depreciating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Maka rounds the corner approaching the club room. As she does so, uh, Yuri? Ah! Yuri jumps at the sound of Maka's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not. Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window, then looks away. Actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden, when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic she realizes that she could be so conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's walk together. I just have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with new ones. Yuri nods and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayuri, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. 
Mark tenses us up at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Uh, sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Um, Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny, I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me, because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's so cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing her into it. Yuri falls silent again as... If she started her thought, her book can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Um, I'm thinking... A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club. It's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Uh... Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic? I could talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She... What? Hold on, you're saying that Sayori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or you don't connect with my interest, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realising that she would just go along with whatever I pushed her into. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because because they pity some weirdo that who doesn't know how to make friends it's the worst feeling i hate it your sharp words cut through the intense air somewhere in the middle of the conversation the two stopped short in the hallway prioritizing the conversation over their original task Malka looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down with her fists clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I could never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. Say Yuri is different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So, if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? I'm sorry, I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to face her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be able to say better. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive in her kindness, further exasperated the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sayori wants to be your friend. I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. My head is just, it's so resistant to everything. I'm, 
I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. This, this kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So, thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Yuri and Monica finishes replacing the old flyers with new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Yuri followed along. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes you can. It'll be great. Yuri sh sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? <laughs> I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. I like to make my own though, so please don't worry about it. Although, I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for the tea in the club room. You can use, like, an electric kettle to heat up the water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think that would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea isn't enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her, but it must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. Yuri? Wait, hold on. I'm not done yet. So Yuri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Sayuri has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through to the next chapter first, but I got most of the way through it. And look, Sari holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes beautifully produced with indentations, categories, and even color coding. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard- Stop. Yuri presses her fists against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Sari's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sari looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand, so if I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay, please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you'd really like- I don't want your pity! Jesus Christ, okay! Why did I do that? Yuri sinks to her knees, her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard to just articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Yuri or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here before Monica sees her like this, and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. But before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. Ah, <sighs> oh, God, stop. Uh, the tears are flowing. Oh my God, I'm actually crying at this again. It's okay. Sayori whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Sayori's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through a clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from the things that you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise I understand that. 
So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts and speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think I've... that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people, so it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sayuri doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the club. I thought that it was finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then... Whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. But how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just I want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Sherry, who could feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you a little bit better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading, so I'll help you with the things you that you need to. But I feel like it would be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> That sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid you would get frustrated with me, but I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know, but my irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah, irrational fears. Well, you know, there's no way that you could frustrate me, because I already like you as the person that you are. I know you said you have a hard time believing that, but I promise that it's true. You don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you really consider it in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about people's feelings? We're all kind of awkward. It's a literature club. <laughs> but it's the best part that we're all different, and we have different interests. Like about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. I promise. That's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that. But I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. <laughs> Yuri fights back a smile at the comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Hmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. Sayori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if the literature club can make it happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Oh man, I legit thought that was going to be the end. I was going to be like, no, don't leave it there, please. Well then, based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear! But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything this early on, though. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, and, um, it's not good to touch people without their consent first. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sayori trots over to Monica. Uh, she whispers out loudly. Can I hug you? <laughs> sure, Sayori. Sayori wraps her arms around Monica. Oh, yeah, Yuri. It might be good to know... Sayori could be kind of a hug monster. Uh, 
Hey, don't call me a hog monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it could spell disaster. <laughs> Yuri laughs. Monica perplexed looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity as the Literature Club. Uh, about that. Well, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it'd be inconsiderate of me not to return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. Can't wait for this moment. I actually get to use the Natsuki voice, finally. <laughs> it's been several weeks since the club has officially started. Through their initial setbacks, the three club members so far, Monica, Sayori, and Yuri, have increased their collective bond within the club. Sayori has partaken in some of Yuri's high fantasy literature, and all three of them, led by Sayori, have taken an interest in poetry. On a day like any other, the three find themselves suddenly interrupted by the club room door opening, and in walks a girl none of them have seen before. <clears throat> Hi? Sayori tugs excitedly at Monica's sleeve. Yuri shifts in her seat and buries her eyes in her book. Are you here for the literature club? But yeah. Yay, that's great. Thanks for stopping by. It's kind of a small club still, so it's really exciting to see new faces. Yeah! Come and sit down somewhere! You can sit next to my desk! Sayori prances over to her desk and presses her palms onto it. Oh, and Yuri, can you make some tea? Uh, <sighs> Yuri looks up at Sayori in protest for having drawn attention to her. Natsuki silently glances between everyone, then sits down next to Sayori. Monica follows by sitting nearby. The sudden gathering prompts Yuri to stand up, deciding that standing in the corner and making tea doesn't sound so bad after all. Okay, then how about we all introduce ourselves? Okay. I'm sorry, it's- it's- I can't get her voice unless she's screaming something. Well, I'm Monica. I'm one who started the club. I was originally in the debate club, but I really wanted to do something I felt more passionate about, if that makes sense. So I started the literature club as a way for people to express themselves through writing or reading or whatever other kind of literature. You know, I figured it was your club. You have that vibe. <laughs> I have what vibe? Oh, you know, like... Never mind. I'm not gonna judge people I just met like that. Very adult-like of you. I always judge people so hard. Oh no you don't, Sayori. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Yuri's deadpan voice carries across the room. Natsuki giggles. I'm Sayori. I just like learning about everyone and making friends. Oh, and I also like poetry. Oh yeah? Very adult-like of you. <laughs> I'm an adult. The sound of Yuri's electric kettle steaming up fills the room. Oh, that's Yuri! So Yuri lowers her voice. She's kind of shy, but she's really nice and super smart. She likes big fantasy books and tea, and I love her. Well, I guess that leaves me then. I'm Natsuki. I like listening to music and hanging out downtown and stuff. And my favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. Ooh, let's get ice cream! My favorite flavor is probably cookie dough, or maybe chocolate. It's cookie dough. And Monica's is probably... probably vanilla? What the heck? I take way too many online quizzes. The ice cream ones are always accurate. What's Yuri's favorite? Natsuki shrugs. Probably green tea. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea for Yuri. Still, it's pretty chill here. Do you just like hang out or do you actually do club stuff? Uh, well, we do club stuff too. It just hasn't been very structured yet since we only have like three members, so we kind of just loosely spend our time doing the stuff we like. But I keep thinking it's about time we start with like some more structured club activities. It's been a while by now since I started the club, so yeah. Well, with that being said, what kind of literature are you into, Natsuki? Anything you'd like the club to get into? Uh, well, I guess I'm literature... Well, I like manga. Manga? Hey! Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> I want to read manga in the club. Wait, hold on a second. That sounds so great. Like, after all I've been doing, all this, um... Yuri returns to the desk with a tray of teacups, which she sets down on an empty desk. After all of the deep and immersive reading I've been doing, I wouldn't mind doing something a little more simple. Manga isn't simple. If you think that, you just don't understand the nuance. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. Well, anyway, putting manga aside, is there any other kind of literature that you're interested in? Well, not really. In that case, have you considered the anime club? Damn, Monica just straight up just doesn't want manga to be a part of the club. What the f***? Like? Are you serious? 
I'm not gonna join the anime club. It's full of weird guys. Come on. Is it that big of a deal? Manga is literature, right? Uh, um, I mean, I guess if you consider the literal definition of literature, then technically, I get it. Look, I'll do whatever club activities you want. Can I please just join? I won't bother anyone. If I could just, like, keep my manga here and hang out after school, I'll do literally whatever you want me to do. That's fine, right? Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god, thank you! You're the best. I have most of it crammed into my locker, so I'm gonna start getting it, okay? Natsuki stands up. Need some help? Nah, I got it. I don't want you to see my locker. <laughs> if you say so. But there's no way it's worse than mine. I hope we never find out then. Natsuki exits the club room, leaving everyone in silence. Save for the sound of Yuri sipping her tea. Uh, I'm such a pushover. Hey, it's not that bad. Natsuki seems like a lot of fun. Maybe, but I mean, she has like no actual interest in literature, you know? And that's normally fine, but she said she would participate in club activities like it's some kind of obligation. Her tea is going to get cold. Yeah. Wait, that's not related. Well, I think everyone deserves a chance. Especially if we can bring happiness to her. Besides, maybe she'll take a liking to literature. Are you sure you just don't want to read her manga, Sayori? Hey, who do you think I am? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. I just feel really uneasy about this. Do you have any opinion, Yuri? Not particularly. She said she wasn't going to bother anyone. That includes me, so... Does that mean I bother you? No, you're pleasant to be around. <laughs> I was just fishing for a compliment. I know. But still, I really think we should give her a chance. Yeah, alright. But I really am going to start enforcing club activities. I'm willing to cooperate. Suddenly the three of them hear a thump against the door. What was that? Sayuri so stands up and walks over to the door and then opens it. Thank you! Carrying three boxes of what is presumably manga, Natsuki grunts and wobbles inside before slowly bending over and dropping the stack onto the floor as gently as she can. That's quite a collection. Sayuri giggles in excitement while catching her breath. Natsuki replies, There's still one more box. I can put them away myself. I know how to organize them. Monica anxiously uh, glances between Sayori and Yuri. Is this really okay for the club? Maybe it's what she needs to really kick the club into gear before everyone gets too complacent. It seems like things are finally going to start getting more serious. At the next club meeting, Monica is the first to arrive. But ever since Natsuki joined, she feels a lot less relaxed. Why am I so nervous? Monica paces trying to figure out her feelings. Natsuki said she wasn't going to bother anyone, so why does it feel like the atmosphere has changed so much? While Monica thinks, the club door opens, revealing Natsuki carrying a box. Monica forces a smile as Natsuki makes her way to the closet. Natsuki forces one in return. Need help? No, I got it. Monica awkwardly tries to start some kind of conversation, but fails. Here she peeks into the closet where Natsuki is stashing all of her manga. Once dull with school supplies, the shelves are now vibrant with bright colours and cute looking artwork. You know, the top shelf is pretty empty. Maybe we could keep it up there. I can't reach up there! That would be such an inconvenience! Yeah, but... Monica sighs. The teachers are going to ask what all this manga is doing here, and I have to tell them it's for the literature club. And so? Monica backs off and slumps into a desk. With this kind of tension, it feels like the relaxed atmosphere accumulated over the past few weeks has been sucked right out of the room. Good afternoon! Why did I have to say it like that? That was... What? Wait. Dun, dun, dun. It sounds familiar. Hold on. Oh. Na, da, 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 da. If you know where that tone's from, then GG. Sayori so spins into the club room. Oh, I see someone's in a good mood. Yeah, because I have this. Sayori so brandishes a cookie wrapped in plastic. I found some money and got a cookie. Ooh, it's so pretty. As Sayori so trots over to the closet, the colorful shelves catch her eye. Which one do I start with? Well, you can start by giving me a bite of that cookie. No way. I saved up all my luck to find that money. If you want entry into my kingdom, you need to pay the tax peasants. Boo. Defeated Sayuri and wraps her cookie and breaks off a piece for Natsuki. Then Yuri silently walks into the club room. Monica glances at her with pleading eyes. Yuri returns a quick nod of understanding. 
Well, everyone's here now. Despite the club only having one more person than before, it somehow feels twice as lively. Okay, so I think today we should go over some potential club activities and see which ones we want to do first. We have four members now, so it would be great if we found some stuff to do as a group. Does that sound good to everyone? I agree. Okay, so I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your ideas too. Well, I've been having a lot of fun learning about everyone else's interests. Maybe we can give each person a day to share their favourite kind of literature with everyone else. Well, maybe. Something tells me that Marco glances at Yuri and Natsuki, who both appear very unwilling to even consider each other's interests. Maybe we can try to come up with something that everyone can enjoy equally. You know, like we all vote on a book to read or something like that. I think we should all collectively try to expand our interests rather than just stick to things we're familiar with. Why does it feel like I'm being targeted here? Natsuki, didn't you say that you'd go along with whatever the club wanted to do? Well, yeah, but that doesn't make it okay for you to ignore everyone else's preferences. I like Sayori's suggestion. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but, um... Malika's voice trails off. Although she let Natsuki join the club, Monica finds it incredibly difficult to relent to her demands. If Natsuki doesn't respect the club, why should Monica have to yield to Natsuki's opinion on anything? Natsuki, are you sure that you don't have any other literature interests you could share with the club? Man, I'm sorry, but why- why Monica is so, like, hesitant about manga? Like, holy sh- Like, <laughs> she's just pressing so hard. I swear I don't mind if you keep your manga in here, but I just- Natsuki cuts Monica off by suddenly standing up. Well, it's obvious that I'm not wanted here, so I'm just gonna leave. But I really would have appreciated you being more upfront about it. Okay, I think you're kind of jumping to conclusions here. But you're free to do whatever you want. Natsuki shoots Monica a quick glare before walking straight out of the room. Damn. Oh no. Sayori runs after her, leaving just Monica and Yuri. For the second time today, Monica slumps down into a desk. Why am I being such a jerk? No, she is a jerk. She's just making me feel this way. Monica looks up at Yuri, seeking affirmation. Yuri looks away. She probably just went around looking for the smallest clubs she could find so that she doesn't have to participate. How does she expect me to give her respect when she has no respect for the club? Am I wrong, Yuri? I'm not... I'm not good at these things. Marika sighs. Me neither. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want to hurt anyone, but I feel like it's not wrong to enforce the club vision. You know, like... People should join because they want to express their passion for literature, or at least develop it. So, maybe she's not a good fit for the club after all. Monica sits in silence, afraid to accept her tentative conclusion. Yuri looks tense, but she doesn't seem to want to add anything. You can... sorry. You can go back to reading. I know this doesn't concern you. It does. It does how? Well, I just can't comfortably read in an atmosphere where the peace has been disturbed. Oh, well, great. I'm just ruining the whole club then. That's not an accurate conclusion to make. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of voicing my frustration and I guess and I guess guilt. It's like my frustration wants to blame her, but my guilt wants to blame me. Ugh, why is this the hardest to be rational during the times you need it most? I don't think you're being irrational. I think Natsuki is. She has no authority to walk in here and make demands of the club, your club. Something as ridiculous as manga has no place here. The fact that you're even storing it for her should make her completely indebted to you. I'm sorry, but it is. Manga is literally literature. Like, you can't say it's not. Like, you could talk, like, literally, English cast, you could probably pull out a manga and it'd still be viable because there's still words and you can talk about the scenarios and what the author meant by this word and this word, you know? But anyway, sorry, that's a little wrong. Well, you're right, but I don't know. Isn't it kind of harsh to say things like it's ridiculous and it has no place here? Do you not feel the same way? You've been doing everything you can to avoid associating the club with it, so I assumed you felt the same way about it. That's not true. Well, recalling her confrontations with Natsuki, a realization starts to set in. Hmm, you may be right. I mean, if it was anything besides manga, would I really be acting like this? Maybe I've just been convincing myself that it has nothing to do with the manga. I'm really upset that I would let myself do that. With a sigh, Monica walks over to the closet. She finds herself staring at the colorful shells. It's just, this really wasn't what I had in mind for the club about literature. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. 
Monica starts defending her position once again. It's a complicated issue that Monica had failed to consider before now. Where is the line even drawn at what's considered literature? Lost in thought, she reaches into one of the larger box sets and pulls out a volume, inspecting it for no particular reason. The cover features four girls striking cute and exaggerated poses, all dressed in short skirts. Yeah, I mean... Amused by the absurdity of the cover, Monica opens the book. Oh, damn, that's it. This sucks. Why is Monica such a jerk? She should be grateful that I even joined her stupid club. It's not like I, she can find any members. Monica's usually really nice. She cares so much about everyone in the club being happy. Yeah, right. Well, she usually does. Maybe when she's not busy being so judgmental. So what if I'm into manga? Why can't just one person accept that? Instead of being so condescending about it. I accept it. I think it's cute. Oh, come on. That's condescending too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just want to support you. Natsuki sighs. I know. Thanks. It just really sucks. Do you want me to talk to Monica? I don't know. It's not like it's going to change her opinion of me. Like, even if you were to convince her to back off, that wouldn't suddenly make me feel like I'm actually welcome in the club. I should just find another club. Oh, wait, you don't have to do that. We can figure this out, please. I mean, I'm the vice president. Or at least, I think I am. I don't want you to leave. Everyone deserves to feel welcome and to be happy. So... I want to make that happen for you. Um, I was wondering, what was the reason you decided to join a literature club? Well, Natsuki hesitates. It's kind of dumb. Ah, uh, don't say that. There's no such thing as a dumb reason when everyone is welcome. I wasn't welcome. You were to me. So, just don't tell anyone, okay? Especially Monica. I promise. Natsuki sighs. I'm just tired of everyone judging me all the time. I can't enjoy any of the stuff I'm into without people making snotty comments about it. Not that I care about what anyone else thinks. But you know, the signs for the literature club said that you can be yourself or whatever. So I decided it was at least worth a shot. But that was a lie, apparently. Natsuki dejectedly kicks her, the toe of her shoe against the wall. Oh, and I like writing too. Really? How come you didn't say that to Monica? Because... She was being so judgmental that I didn't just want to tell her something she wanted to hear. She didn't deserve that kind of satisfaction. If she knew I was into writing, then she would just be like everyone else and try to push me away from the manga in favor of the more mature thing. Hmm. The two of them remain silent for a while. Sayori understands that it's out of the question for Natsuki to return to the club room for today at least. But Natsuki has a reason for wanting to join the club, just like everyone else. It's part of the club vision for her to be welcome. You deserve to express yourself as much as everyone else does. That's supposed to be what the club is for. So I'm going to do everything I can to fix this. I promise. Damn, my voice is already in shambles. It's lunchtime the next day. The cafeteria and hallways are bustling with students rushing to meet with their friends and make the most out of their limited break time. Where could she be? Among them is Monica, who always eats lunch in her classroom, but she has some additional business today. Fearing Natsuki would avoid coming to the club, Monica decided to try and find her during lunch so that she could make amends. After searching for an extensive time, Monica finally spots her. Despite her short stature, Natsuki's bright hair helps her stand out from the crowd. Oh gosh. Suddenly feeling awkward, Monica is afraid to get closer. Natsuki is with some friends who Monica doesn't recognize and they're all energetically chatting together. It would be really tactless to just interrupt them. Oh, this is different. Oh, f oh no, I'm gonna have to make new voices now. Uh, I'm not gonna remember these voices. Okay, let's just do silly voices. Oh yeah? Did you just end up joining the Legend Club or what? Huh? Of course I joined. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I told you she would join. <laughs> Come on, you know she only joined because you wouldn't stop giving a crap about the anime club. I told you I never wanted to join that stupid club. Oh, sure. Well, you have to give her some credit for at least making an effort to finally grow past the trash. <laughs> True. Well, congrats on finally graduating middle school, Natsuki. We're proud of you. Shut up. Just let me do my thing. I'm just joking. You know we love you. Yeah. 
Once the literature club makes you a famous writer, we'll be the first ones to buy your book. What, you're gonna buy her smutty fan fiction? <laughs> well, obviously, I want a signed copy. That was like years ago. You don't think I've grown out of that by now? I told you I was joking. Besides, it's a good reminder of how far you've come since then. Not to mention, you couldn't have done it without us. That gives us a pass to joke about it. Yeah, sure. They grow up so fast, it brings a tear to my eye. Natsuki suddenly glances in Monica's direction, prompting Monica to quickly turn away and distance herself. What the heck? That was horrible. I should have said something to defend her. Why do I have to be so conflict avoidant? Not that I deserve to say anything. I'm hardly better than them after the way I treated her. I'm so awful. I'm not doing anything right. After school ends, Monica distractedly makes her way to the club room. She finds Yuri already inside, eyes on the book as usual. Monica picks a desk and slumps into it, something she seems to be doing rather often lately. Yuri, I don't think I could be club president. I suck at handling anything that doesn't go, like, exactly my way. Yuri looks up from her book. It's like, the literature club is a place where you get to express yourself, unless it's in a way that I don't like. I'm so mad at myself, and I'm especially mad that I didn't have the self-reflection skills to realise what I was doing. So much for maturity. Sorry, I really shouldn't be complaining out loud like this. There's just like, a lot on my mind. No, um, I enjoy listening. Really? Um, why? Yuri shrugs. It just makes me feel nice. Oh, well, okay, I guess I'll just continue then. Yuri nods. Yeah, I just, well, Natsuki has kind of a blunt attitude, you know? It makes me feel like she wasn't taking the club seriously. I couldn't even figure out why she wanted to join. I saw her friends talking to her in the hallway during lunch, and they were just so mean to her, telling her to grow up and stuff like that, that the literature club would help her grow out of her manga. It just made me so mad. Like, just let her enjoy it. It makes her happy. Why are you trying to take that away from her? And when I had that thought, it just... It was was when I came to the realization that I was kind of doing the same thing, just in a roundabout way. I should have made her feel good about being passionate about something, but I just dismissed it. No, I was actually trying to avoid acknowledging it at all. I even did that with you, Yuri, when you first joined the club. Y you did? Yeah, I remember. Fancy isn't really my thing, so I was kind of trying to dismiss it. But then Sayuri jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that, but I didn't because I just let Sayuri handle it instead. And now I'm repeating the same mistake, except I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. I'm so stupid. Like, I can just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her share her passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm going to get them back for it. And get them back? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get them back by making sure that this is the literature club that Natsuki wants, not the one that they want. Suddenly Sayuri bursts through the door making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention! I can do that because I'm vice president! Is this about Natsuki? Yeah! Yeah, I know. I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was just talking to Yuri about it. Really? I was so dismissive about her passion that she felt threatened and probably just unwelcome. Literally the opposite of what the literature club was supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh. Yay, I did it! <laughs> Thanks for the intervention, Sayuri. I'm glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again! So how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Siri, do you know if Natsuki is coming to the club meeting today? She's... I don't think she is. I see. Monica was afraid of that. Not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage that she's inadvertently caused. But the only way to do the right thing is to face it head on. It's so easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over. But that's not enough. To truly respect someone's feeling after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespecting Natsuki's feelings. Okay, do you think you can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that! Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener.
Pitching with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Ah. Well, I guess for today, it's going to be a pretty quiet club meeting. I'm gonna step out for a bit, is that okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna read with Yuri. Hey, is this one of Natsuki's books? How come it's out here? Surya picks up a manga that was resting on the adjacent desk. Oh, that. Um, Natsuki probably just left it out by accident. But I thought she hasn't been coming to the club. Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri, I'm sure it was just someone else who was using this classroom then, okay? Monica smiles at them both. Then with a wave, she exits the club room. <laughs> she just doesn't want to admit that she, uh, she was reading it. I really shouldn't have left that out. If Siri catches on, she'll definitely tell Natsuki. And that would get really awkward. Now, I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music room. The time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. Do you think Sayuri is going to be able to bring Natsuki? Yeah. How do you know? Well, she's Sayuri. Um... You know, you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits, then stands up to pace around, then sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. Then the door finally opens. Sayori marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shuffles inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here! Welcome back. Monica, the club president, stands up with and greets them with a smile. Sayori picks a desk and takes a seat. Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. She would stand at the front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict just how unique and diverse each member would be. Each with their own struggles, her own reasons for seeking the vision that Monica had admittedly so vaguely advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect. What new lessons will the future hold for the literature club? Realizing she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. Okay, everyone. The literature club is starting. We have an activity planned for today. Monica turns around to face the chalkboard. On it, she writes manga in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about unique form of literature, manga. Oh, come on. Isn't this kind of forced? I know you don't actually want to do this, so just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki. This is the hardest part. After making it this far, it would be just so easy to just smile and move on. But that's not enough. Not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong for me not to take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about it, and I realized how biased I was against manga. It caused me to disrespect you, and I'm sorry. But I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So, can I make it up to you? Well, thanks, but I know you're only doing this because Sayori told you to. Wait, that's not true! Monica planned this by herself. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. I was witness to that as well. This is the Literature Club. The Literature Club is a place where everyone gets to be themselves. We all have our own interests and our own differences. It's my vision to let us freely express that and it's my goal to respect everyone for them so i just want to learn about the things that make you happy i think that you deserve to share that joy as much as everyone else does is that okay natsuki looks away and hesitates but it's really dumb the stuff i'm into Monica smiles she kneels in front of natsuki's desk looking her straight in the eye if you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Sayori, you're not dumb either. <laughs> what the heck? You guys are so weird. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admitted that it's literature after all. Natuki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but I'm actually into writing too. I'm kind of a pro, but I didn't want you to like me just for that. Wow, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natuki. Yeah, whatever. Today's not about that, right? It's about manga, so I hope you're ready. A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the Literature Club. Since then, the club activities have been in full swing. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favourite kinds of literature with each other. As another meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. Natsuki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Me? Not particularly. Why? Oh, there was just something that I wanted to show you if you had a few minutes. Sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? The music room? Why? Well, you'll see. Oh, I think it's- Oh, this is cool! Oh, man! My home turf! When I used to do music in college. Of course, it wasn't as fancy looking as this, but still, man. Anyway, sorry, I just have to- I'm just looking around the room, because it's so nice looking. You know, I was thinking back. When the club was just me and Sayori, we would talk about how we envisioned the club to turn out. We heard a lot about it being a place where people could express themselves. And she said something strange to me. She said that I was trying to make the club that I needed myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I fully understood that. 
because you really taught me a lot about myself. Like things that I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh, come on. You can't mean that. I didn't even do anything. I just like brought a bunch of manga and then I got fussy when I didn't have my way. It was really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I would have never realized that I did something wrong. Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be heard and respected. It's just really hard to feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I really shouldn't care about what other people think in the first place. But when you're just criticized by everyone around you for being a certain way, it can really get hard to just brush it off. And it makes me start to feel like I'm the problem. Like, I'm not doing enough to please everyone else. Am I just too entitled if I just want people to like me without me having to hide a bunch of stuff about myself? I don't think I am. I just wish that sometimes people would try to appreciate me for who I actually am. As Monica listens, she recalls vividly how Natsuki's friends were treating her and how naturally they did so. How long has she been fighting against that, refusing to change for others? I could only wish I was as strong as you are, Natsuki. You're so honest with yourself. I'm like, always trying to come off as perfect for other people. Anytime there's like a hint of contention, I just crumble. But it's thanks to you that I really started thinking about this stuff. You really inspired me to start working on it but I well like I said I didn't even do anything you were just being yourself that's all you needed to be also there's something else huh Monica takes a deep breath uh the thing is I might have read a little bit of your manga what you what the heck why didn't you tell me I'm sorry, I think I just felt like kind of embarrassed to admit it after I gave you such a hard time about it. <laughs> I can't believe you, of all people, were reading manga by my back. That's so funny. Yeah, well, I just flipped through one of them out of curiosity, but I ended up reading a whole bunch of it. But I mean, one of the characters was in the literature club. What are the chances, right? You were reading Parfait Girls? Wow, you have good taste. Just, just one volume. And I kind of just picked it out randomly. Well, you have good intuition then. You have to tell me about all your favorite parts. <laughs> well, I think it was some kind of weird fate because the character isn't just in the literature club. She also plays piano. It's just weird because I've always wanted to learn piano. She was like the perfect person that I always wish I was. If I just did what I wanted instead of always second guessing myself. Marka walks over to the piano and sits down. Ah, look at this scene. I always felt like I should only share the absolute best parts of myself. The parts that will impress people or make them like me more. But after you joined the club, I really realized how self-destructive that mentality is. We share things because we want to express ourselves. Sharing experiences allows us to share emotions. And I just felt like, like I wanted to show you this because if it wasn't for you, I never would have started playing. <laughs> hey. I think the credit for that one goes to the Parfait Girls, not me. No. Well, maybe it's true that Parfait Girls put the thought into my head, but it was still you who inspired me to keep practicing every day. Every day? Because, you know, you just make me feel like if I want to do something, I should just do it. I mean, I still haven't been practicing for very long, but I'm really not any good at it yet. Like, at all. But I wrote a song for the club and I worked really, really hard on it. So it doesn't have any words or anything, but well, yeah. Mm, dun, dun, dun. Ah, this is nice. Oh, that's the part from the trailer. Yeah. Oh man, it's another play on the actual tunes already. Oh no! Man, we're flashbacking! Oh my god. Man, no wonder they said you have to play in order, man. <laughs> I always like that uh, sprite of Sayori. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, bad. How wholesome. Oh man, that's all. That was so good. It was? Yeah, are you kidding me? You're like already a pro. <laughs> Not even close. Does the song have a name? You said it would be about the club, so yeah. It's called My Song, Your Notes. Because everyone brings something so unique to the club. It's completely different from how I first imagined it, I think. But I was like, such a selfish perfectionist. It shouldn't be about me. It should be about everyone. And it's all of you who helped me shape the club into what it is. I would have never changed that. Well, I think that's really thoughtful. And kind of flattering. I kind of feel like I don't deserve this much validation. I wasn't exactly very patient either when I first joined the club. It makes me feel like I should probably apologize too. I think I was just really fed up with a lot of things and I got frustrated after not getting my way in the club. So yeah, I really didn't mean to take it out on you. I was being really immature. <laughs> if you get my stubborn butt to apologize, I guess you're doing something right. It's fine. I'm past it too. I think we're already even. But it's really sweet that you were thinking about it. It takes a lot of maturity to reflect on that kind of thing. Well, well, I wonder who I got it from. <laughs> oh, never mind. Well, anyway, we're even as long as you let me keep my manga in the club room. You did admit it that it's a form of literature. You totally can't take that back now. <laughs> you got me. The closet's all yours. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll bring in a little something for the club tomorrow. I want to do something nice in return. What kind of little something? Oh, you'll see, but I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, I already think I know what's gonna happen. The next one being ends up being a particularly tasty one. Natsuki! While Natsuki is messing with the orientation of her manga in the closet shelves, Sayori approaches from behind and pulls her into an embrace. What? Hi. Hi. The Literature Club has been in full swing since Natsuki joined. Including her, the club is now comprised of four members. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monika. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favourite kinds of literature with each other. Natsuki was first and shared her passion for manga. Then Sayori shared her love for poetry as well as how she goes about writing it herself. Monika, who has multiple literary interests, decided to focus her day on short stories. And finally, Yuri managed to demonstrate her her obsession with fantasy, with a little help and encouragement from Sayori. After the week was spent on their presentations, Monica decided to give the club members this next week to freely explore each other's literary interests. Sayori having spent most of her time in the club so far with Yuri's fantasy books is rather excited to begin her journey into Natsuki's manga collection. I want to read with you today! Tell me which one I should pick! Uh, well, that depends on the kind of stuff you like. I mean, there's like romance, drama, comedy, mystery. I like all of those things! Sayori reaches out and pulls a random book from the shelf and inspects the cover. Shouldn't this girl be wearing more clothes? You wouldn't like that one! In a panic, Natsuki snatches the book from Sayori's hand, then replaces it on the shelf in a less conspicuous location. Okay, well, if you really have no preference, then let's just start with something that's easy to get into. A lot of these don't start to get really good until like a few volumes in, and I wouldn't ask someone to make that kind of commitment unless they're already into manga. I could handle it. I did it with Yuri's books at least. Well, I'm more considerate than that. Although, I'm kind of impressed by your attention span if you put that much effort into her books. No? I have an attention span of a donut, but I love my friends, and I can do anything if it's for them. Well, okay then. Let's pick you something that even donuts can read. I didn't say I was a donut, I just said I had the attention span of one. Ah, you were just trying to call me a sweet, weren't you? You're so cute. No! How did you get to that conclusion? And don't call me that. A donut? C cute. Ah, how come? I just don't like it. I don't need a reason. Natsuki yanks a book from the shelf and closes the closet doors. If someone asks you to stop, then you just need to stop. People need to realize that. I'm, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Nah, I'm sorry. It wasn't you. Natsuki shakes her head while pulling a second chair over to her desk. 
I was talking about something else. I didn't mean to get all angry all of a sudden. Natsuki adverts her gaze and mumbles. You're like, well, like a nice person, so I wasn't talking about you. I still learned a valuable lesson. Suri speaks softly as well, feeling shy after receiving the unexpected compliment. Well, anyway, here's the book, so just start it whenever you feel like it. What's it about? Well, it's like a comedy, and there's romance too, obviously. Suri looks at the title. It's called Love is Another Word for Love. It's about a girl who accidentally runs into the same guys and then you find out like well you should just read it but you have to tell me what you think i can already guess you're gonna sh ship yourself with it would be so funny if i'm right ship i don't get it nah never mind let's not worry about that yet just make sure you tell me what you think oh okay i'll start then hey maybe tomorrow we can do poetry too oh um yeah i guess but don't you want to finish this first yeah we could do both I mean, unless you don't like poetry, then I won't make you or anything. No, it's just... Well, never mind. We can worry about it tomorrow. After the club meeting ends and Natsuki and Yuri leave, Monica strikes up a conversation with Sayori. I see you got Natsuki to share some of her manga with you. I really want to become better friends with her. She's so enthusiastic and expressive. I could just listen to her talk. She's so cute. Uh, I'm not sure if she meant that I can't say that to her, or if I just can't say it at all. Say what? Nothing! I am a woman of respect! But Natsuki is a woman of cute. Oh, I said it. <laughs> What's so bad about that? I don't know. But you know, there's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Sometimes I'm afraid that Natsuki actually doesn't like me very much. Ah, that's ridiculous. How can we feel that way? Well, I mean, just little signs like how she only says hi to me after I say hi to her first. And it feels like she only gets excited to talk to me when it's about manga and other stuff she likes. She just seems dismissive a lot. She was like that when I brought up poetry. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like you. She's probably just shy, you know? Maybe. <laughs> My stupid head is just making me worry for no reason. It likes to do that. It's okay. Try not to worry about it so much. Everything will be great. We can always talk to me about any concerns that you have. I'm here to help. You're the best. Siri gives Monica a quick hug. Well, I'm gonna keep trying because I love her and I wanna get close to her. You got this. Sounds like the exact same thing like that uh, the MC would have originally said in the original thing. After the next club meeting starts, Sayori is the last one in as usual. Trotting into the room, she sees Natsuki sitting alone by the closet reading what must be manga. Without hesitation, Sayori pulls up a chair and plops herself down right next to Natsuki. Hello there! Hi. What you reading? Can I read it with you? Natsuki pulls the book away from Sayori. You can't just start in the middle. There are spoilers. Besides, what about the one I gave you yesterday? Uh, sorry, I was just curious. Well, anyway, I've been waiting forever for this volume to come out, and it just came out yesterday, so... Oh, that's exciting. Well, I'll let you read it then. Mm. Can I sit next to you, though? Uh, sure. Sayori plops herself down next to Natsuki and pulls out a blank sheet of paper. Natsuki reads in silence... Uh, save for the periodic flutter of a page being released from beneath her thumb. From Sayori's side, only the light tapping noises of her pen meeting the paper can be heard. Time passes. Sayori's paper is filled with scribbles and the margins are lined with stick figures. Natsuki lets out a deep sigh and closes her book. Did you finish? No, but it's a good stopping point. My head is swimming. I need a break. Natsuki stretches her arms. Aren't you bored? No, I was writing. Oh, I saw all the stick figures and thought you were just bored. I just draw those when I'm thinking or waiting for inspiration. I made friends with them all. This one is sad because she thinks the night sky is pretty, but she can't look up at the stars in public without everyone thinking she's a weirdo. And this one has problems with his back, but the doctors can't figure out what's wrong with him. <laughs> what the heck? You're a weirdo. Wanna read the poem I'm working on? I'm sure, I guess. Sarai slides the paper over to Natsuki. As Nikosuki reads through the poem, she furrows her eyebrows. Hmm. She slides the paper back over to Sayori. Don't you ever feel weird just sharing all of your thoughts and feelings like that? I mean, your poems are like, really emotional. Is that bad? Well, no. It was just an observation. I think people can get closer to each other if they find ways of expressing their feelings. Well, Natsuki begins to protest, but she can't find a good way of putting her thoughts into words. Doesn't that depend more on the kinds of friends you have? I don't know. Teach their own, but I've never met anyone I'd feel comfortable sharing my poems with. Not that it's you, it's just how I am, so... You write poems? You never told me that! I just thought you wrote other stuff. Yeah, that too, but you should- I mean, would you ever want to share? Like I said, I don't do that. But, can we talk about something else? 
I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It just makes me uncomfortable. I can't help it. Still, I'm sorry. It's fine. Well, let's move on to something that makes us both happy. I should continue the book you gave me, since I didn't get very far yet. Sure. Over the next few days, Sayori begins each club meeting by approaching Natsuki with unwavering enthusiasm. It's Natsuki! Natsuki! Hi, Natsuki! At the end of one club meeting, Monica, who has become rather invested in Sayori's friendship mission, starts the innocuous conversation with Natsuki while she packs up. It's cool that you've been finding time to spend with Sayori. She was pretty excited for the chance to read manga with you. Yeah. I'm sure you've been enjoying the chance to share too, right? Yeah, mostly. Huh? Natsuki glances over her shoulder, but doesn't reply further. Well, what's on your mind? Nothing. I don't talk about people behind their backs. Oh. Natsuki falls silent, but she just fidgets instead of getting back to what she was doing, as though she wants to say more. It's okay to share your feelings. That's different from talking about someone behind their back. I guess. I just hate when people talk about me behind my back, so I'm better than to do it to others. Malka shares a bright smile. You're really considerate. Um, thanks, I guess. But it doesn't feel like it. You can trust me. Natsuki stands in silence for a moment, still fidgeting. I just feel smothered sometimes. I'm not used to someone being, like, all over me right after we meet. I mean, it's fun to hang out with her, but I just have no control over the pace. I can't just meet someone and instantly become best friends with them. And, like, share everything about myself. That's not how it works. I just want to chill out sometimes. Oh, I didn't realize that was happening. It's fine. Why would you have? I know, I just feel bad about it. I know Sayori, so I should have realized. Monica navigates through her tinge of guilt, which has surfaced mainly due to her being the one who previously incurred Sayori's behavior. Despite not knowing the situation, Monica can't help but feel a little responsible. Do you want to talk to her about it? No, I wouldn't like that. Well, I could... I don't know, I could, like, divert her into another club activity for you or something. No way! That'd be so underhanded and mean. Sorry, I didn't think that one through. Besides, just because I complained about it doesn't mean I'm asking for someone to solve my problems for me. True. I'm sorry. I guess I just instinctively want to try to solve problems, even if it hasn't been invited to. It's fine. I would talk to Sayori about it, but it would make things really weird between us. I feel like it would make her just constantly be afraid that she's bothering me. I don't know how to just keep things natural. Well, I think if you do a good job expressing all your feelings, she would totally understand. Sayori really wants to be the best she can be for other people. I think she would actually be happy that you want to improve your friendship with her. Maybe. Ugh. It just feels so dumb talking to someone about how to be friends with them. It's just weird and not cool. It's the literature club. Then she mumbles through a stifled laugh. It's not the cool club. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, that just tickled me for some reason. Look, I know that you're kind of in a tough spot and it's hard for you to really express yourself, but you've really demonstrated to me that you're great at self-reflection and critical thinking. Even if it doesn't feel like it to you. I think that's the most important thing of being able to navigate through these things. So I believe that you'll find the right thing to do. Well, Natsuki instinctively starts to reject the compliment, but she can't find any excuse to do so. Thanks. Natsuki gathers her things and then finishes her thoughts in a mumble. And I'm still glad I joined the club, even if it's weird sometimes. Monka smiles, but Natsuki turns her back and walks away before waiting for a reply. It was an unusual way for Natsuki to express her appreciation, but Monica knew what she meant. It made Monica feel like everything really was going to be okay. It's lunchtime. Sayori, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowning by Sayori's impeccable skill of zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. Hey, it's Natsuki! I never run into other club members around the school. Natsuki! Sayori stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki, who's busy walking and chatting with her friends, doesn't notice Sayori at first. Then she glances over in Sayori's direction. Sayori waves enthusiastically. <coughs> Following her friends, Satsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Hey! She definitely saw me! Oh god, ouch! Straight up just dodged! Monica is the first to arrive to the club meeting, then Natsuki. Sayori, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. Natsuki's been so distant with me. I was stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. 
She only got excited because she got to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Um, sorry, but do you plan on going inside? No. Why? I'm sulking. Oh, well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me! Oh, I'll stay here then. I don't want to go in. I'm afraid of bothering Atsuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her. But instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Hmm, not bad. Hey! Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, that was a joke. It just sounded like something stupid that I would do for an anxiety. Anxiety? Anxi anxiety? Anxiety? From anxiety? Well, I just don't like attention being drawn to myself. Oh, well that makes sense based on the person you are. But Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. But it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more instead of getting closer to me. It makes me feel like she was only spending time with me during the club because I was reading manga. But she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, well, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends. With her friends. Yuri paused for a moment. How do I put this? Sayuri, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. Of course! I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always with my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... You hate being alone? Sayuri nods. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I think... Well, if I was trying to have alone time and it was being threatened with an interruption, then it just would not make me very happy happy. Yeah, but this doesn't have the, this... Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with Natsuki. She was already with her friends, uh, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's similar. It's... Well, we're all friends in the club, but we have our own lives outside of the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine your lives together, but the capacity at which each person is ready to do that might be different. There are friends who just like to have fun together and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. I think when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. I mean, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside of the club. It could be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. But that means I really was bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her. So I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? I don't know. I'm sorry. My insight was really only based on what I understand about my own needs. And Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Was I so selfish? Even if all that is true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right balance. Now I heard her and she doesn't want to talk to me. How could I let myself do this? Um, Sayori? I think that, well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki didn't harbour any ill feelings towards you. I enjoy listening to others. So I think if we were to realistically consider the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um, I'm bad at this, I'm sorry. You're a lot better than me at things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly Sayuri gives Yuri a gentle hug. Um, you're the best Sayuri. I'm sorry for burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me, you're such a sweetheart. I just, it's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others, and my friends deserve happiness. Sayuri beams. Well, I think I'm gonna give Natsuki some space. She should do what she wants and if she does still want to be friends then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's for the best. I wish I didn't feel so awful and guilty. It makes me feel desperate like I need to make it up to her by trying to make her happy but that's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts but I guess it means I still need to grow. I really want to grow as a person. If it's to be better for my friends, I want that. That's very mature of you Sayori. <laughs> I'm mature. Sayori so hops him down on her toes. So does that mean you'll be going home after all? Sayori shakes her head. I need 
need to be here to show her that I respect her space. I'll just spend time in the club by myself today. Yuri nods understanding. You can go in first. Okay, you're blocking the door. Oh, Sayuri steps aside. By the way, before Yuri enters the club room, Sayuri interjects. You said that you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't really think that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Sayuri, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Yuri turns and enters the club room. After a moment, Sayuri follows. The club room is quiet. When Sayuri walks in, Natsuki glances in her direction. Sayuri smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Sayuri decides it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she pulls it out. However, it looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. Oh, are we writing today? Marika speaks in a quiet voice, unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Natsuki's desk. Hey! Natsuki pulls the sheet closer to her and covers it with her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Whatever. I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze. I think she's bad at me. How come? I'm I'm busy right now. Ask me later. Monica falls silent. Natsuki looks back down at her page. She inches her hand away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see it says to Sayori. Understanding, Monica smiles. She places a hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly, I'm proud of you. Natsuki looks away but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Natsuki's shoulder a quick squeeze before standing back up and pulling away. The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed. So has Monica. After checking on Sayuri and Natsuki to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayuri was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying late for no known reason, a sign of tension hangs in the air. After finishing the volume, Sayuri brings it to the closet to put it away. She slides it back onto the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in order to return it to its proper location. I'm sorry, I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall silent again, avoiding eye contact. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. Well, I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow. Um, Sayuri so turns away to hide her pained expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof Natsuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. Defeated, Sayuri carries herself out of the room. Once in the hallway, Sayuri takes a little deep breath and hits her palms against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Uh, um, suddenly Natsuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Natsuki. Natsuki? Startled Sayori turns back around to face Natsuki. Natsuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. I I have a lot of things to say. Me me too. But you go first. Natsuki bites her lips and can't stay still. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Trying to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down a little. I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just being kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to like, I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable, especially when it comes to like, like feelings and stuff. So face burning, Natsuki clams up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds up a sheet of paper for Sayori to take. Oh, we get to read this, let's go. The best place in the world. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colors and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures. All my books, my collections, my memories. All of my dreams are born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, all my failures, my fears, my feelings. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch, but it's still the best place in the world. But when someone knocks, I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture. An eye peeks through the keyhole and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put them away, to see them again. I have so much to do and I'm scared. I'm not ready, but it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually open the door and I'll show you the best place in the world.
It's a poll. But I thought, well, I sucked it up so that I could work things out with you. So just, just be happy about it. Please? Siri smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you did this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted. And that we probably have different ways we like to make friends. Um, about like the friendship stuff. I mean, it's okay. I understand. So you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job. So don't force yourself if you're not ready yet, okay? Natsuki nods. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault, and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and wanted to give you some space. I was thinking it's silly that I just approach you all the time, and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you comfortable. I respect that from now on. Friendships should always start with those things. With the right balance. Natsuki nods again. One thing about that, huh? Well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced like you said. Sayuri nods. I understand. We'll make sure of that together then. Well, anyway, now that the two of them have found common ground, Natsuki finds it easier to speak more freely again. I'm not gonna be, like, sharing my poems all the time now or anything like that, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to do so once in a while. Only the best ones. So you better like them, because otherwise I might change my mind. I like anything you do, Natsuki. I- I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. Huh? Oh, f from the manga. Wait, I need to guess who it is. You definitely won't be able to guess. The two walk down the hallway together. <laughs> oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Darren, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Aw, oh, you wanted to enjoy it with me. That's so cute. Aw, oh, shush. <laughs> um, am I bothering you? Um, no. Okay, just checking. It's hard to tell since you always look so into it when you're reading. It makes me scared to interrupt. Well, it's within my expectations to be interrupted when I read here. It's mainly when I'm by myself that I don't like it. Um... That makes sense. I guess if you're here in the first place, then you're more ready to socialize, even if it takes a little bit of prodding. It's not so bad to be social if I let others do the work, so it can be healthy to put myself in a social environment every now and then. It's mostly difficult when I don't know anyone, or there are too many people or everyone is being too silly for me to keep up with. Yuri glances across the room at Sayori and Natsuki. Sayori has her head cocked back and her mouth open, trying to catch pieces of a cookie that Natsuki is lobbing into the air. But the pieces keep bouncing off her face and hitting the floor. Maybe I should say something. No need. They just ran out of cookie. What a waste. They've really become good friends, haven't they? I'm happy. Sayori seems particularly good at making that happen. But the two of them are both on the energetic side, so I suppose it works out well. Yeah. Come to think of it, you and I haven't had many chances to talk one-on-one, -on -one, have we? Though, that may be partially my fault, since I'm supposed to be the one engaging club members. And not at all. I've probably formed a habit of drawing minimal attention to myself. The responsibility is equally on me. At least to display some openness to engage. Well, what about during times like lunch? Do you meet up with friends? I... I just read. Oh. But I like it that way. It feels nice to be carried off again after morning classes. Hmm. Do you always read fantasy? Oh, not always. I suppose it's all I've read recently, but only because I'm in the middle of this series. There are still two more books after this one. I guess those long books suit you well, since you spend so much time reading. Well, fantasy may be my favourite, but after that, I'm more or less indiscriminate to genres. I'll read anything with depth and maturity. Oh yeah? Even like, romance? Well, there are a lot of books that have elements of romance in them. Oh, come on, Yuri. You know what I mean. Monica lowers her voice. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, so I won't tell anyone if you do too. Maybe more when I was in middle school. I mean, I was really lonely and people were mean to me a lot. So I just, it kind of felt like 
Mm, please don't make me think about the past. <laughs> Sorry, I just got super curious. You know, we should totally pick out a romance novel to read. That would be so much fun. Absolutely not. Really? Even if it is just between us? Try asking someone who has no shame, like Natsuki. Ouch. Uh, so sorry. I swear I didn't mean that. Well, I guess it was my fault for pressing you. I'm like that for things in my past too. You know, things I feel too embarrassed to re-experience. There's nothing wrong with growing out of things. It happens to everyone. For instance, Natsuki's interest in manga reminds me quite a bit of how intense I used to be about my own interests. It makes me think that she'll likely grow out of it too. Hey, were you talking about me? Um, no, we were just... Oh, we were just talking about how our interests have changed over the years. When did you get into manga, Natsuki? Um, like a couple of years ago, I guess. I was already sort of into it before that, but I wasn't really going hard until then. Oh yeah? What was it that inspired you to get more into it? I don't know. Mm, I guess... Let me think. It was after I discovered a series that I really liked. Yeah, I was just like really fed up with a lot of things and I got super into this one series that I really related to. I guess I had an edgy phase where I just hated everyone around me and I wanted to be by myself. <laughs> hey, yo, what? Hey, kind of like Yuri. Monica? <laughs> Sorry. That's completely wrong, so it's still cool that you both really found your thing. They're almost like opposites, but it sounds like they helped you a lot through hard times. You know it? Um, wow, what the heck? Is that book even bigger than the last one you were reading? Uh, um, it's technically slightly longer, but not by very much. How high do you think it would go if you stacked up the whole series? Natsuki estimates by holding her hand high above her head, sizing up an imaginary stack. I should get one of those mangas that's like 50 volumes long so I can say I've read more than you. <laughs> Not that I have that money for that. Please. That would hardly count when your books only have a few words per page. I know, I was just joking. I could never actually read books like yours. It's too boring for me. Yuri shoots a glare at Natsuki. It's not boring. Chill. I said for me, not for you. I can have my own opinion. I just think it's too convoluted. Sayori, are those from the floor? Oh my god. That... Sayori! You're not meant to be eating food off the ground. Especially, that's definitely after the five second rule. What the f*** like? Um. <laughs> Gross. Also, wash your hands before touching any of my books. But my hands aren't dirty. Just do it. The oils are there, even if you can't see them. Fine. Sayori so trots out the door and Natsuki follows. Yuri, you look a little upset. What kind of nerve does she have to call my hobby boring? Well, she did correct herself. Hardly. She was so condescending. I don't mind if she thinks it's not for her. I already understand that it's not for everyone. But she knows well how much these mean to me. So how about just leaving me alone instead of needlessly telling me the things you hate about it? I'm sorry, Yuri. You may be right. This won't be the last time people have strong feelings about what they like and don't like. Especially in the literature club. So I should figure out how to meditate discussions to keep them positive and constructive. Oh, mediate. Sorry. For the record, I've always been impressed by the level of creativity in your books. And also your ability to get through them so quickly. Thank you. Okay, well, this is something that I'll have to think about and revisit. I'm sure I can help Natsuki find some common ground with you. Common ground isn't necessary. Necessary. I just wish to be respected. That then. Either way, I'll do my best. I'm skeptical when it comes to Natsuki. I trust you, Monica, but I'm skeptical. Oh yeah, another new tune. Okay, everyone. We have a special club meeting today. As you know, the Literature Club is a place where we can get to share things that we're really passionate about. But that also means we should be mindful of how we respond to each other's feelings. I think we have a chance to turn our differences into positive energy for each other. Aren't you being a little dramatic about this? This is important to me. Well, sorry. I just feel like I'm being accused or something. No, I'm not accusing anyone or of anything. I'm sorry if it came off that way. But our conversation yesterday made me reflect on the power of language and I thought it would be a good topic for the literature club don't you think I'm sure we're going to have differences in opinions a lot so I need to make sure we're prepared to keep a positive atmosphere in the club if you say so sure the cool thing about language is that it gives us a lot of different ways to express the same idea or emotion. We have a lot of control over how we want the other person to feel when receiving our thought. This goes for poetry, narratives, casual conversation, basically everything. For example, Sayori, what's your favourite food? Um... 
I have them organized by category. Should I start with snacks? What do you mean full meals? Should I include breakfast? Oh jeez. Okay, how about your favorite fruit? Ah, that's easy! Cherries! Really? I just thought cherries tasted nasty. What? Cherries are delicious! Whoa, that's a pretty strong reaction. Well, I just don't understand how somebody could think cherries are nasty. How does it make you feel? I don't know. Sad? Defensive, maybe? Yeah, I got defensive. See, the reason you had such a strong reaction wasn't just because I don't like the cherries. It's because you felt like your opinion was under attack. But that's weird, right? Something like taste is completely subjective. But when I say something like, I think cherries taste nasty, I'm using objective language. I'm challenging Sayori's reality that cherries are delicious with my own, which is that cherries are nasty. Wait, hold on! How is that objective when you just said it was only your opinion? It has to do with the way our brains interpret the words. You're talking about the reality of the cherries, not your feelings about them. Like Sayori. Let's rewind for a second and pretend I didn't tell you that I think cherries are nasty. Good! So, what if instead of that, I said like, I've tried cherries and they're not for me. It's not the kind of flavor I enjoy. Well, that's fine. As long as you don't call them nasty. Nasty is a nasty word. Okay. So cherries was kind of a weird example, but I think it gets the point across. This time around, instead of talking about the cherries, I just talked about my feelings. And Sayori didn't get defensive. So instead of clashing with one another, it's like we received an invitation to talk about our differences. Yuri, you don't need to take notes. I'm not going to quiz you or something. I, I know that. I was just... Um, sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. You can do whatever you'd like, but does anyone have any thoughts so far? Yeah? I just feel like I shouldn't have to put all my language through a filter just to protect someone's feelings. Well, you don't have to. The choice is yours on how you want to come across to other people. I'm only suggesting it as a tool to help turn your differences into a positive experience, rather than an argument. Right, Siri? Whatever you say, cherry hater. No, oh, come on. Siri, I actually like cherries. I was just saying that to help demonstrate. What the heck? I've been duped! <laughs> I'm sorry, Sayori. I'll make it up to you later. How about a cherry sundae? You are welcome to dupe me any time, my beloved president. Buying your people's loyalty, how deplorable. Oh, like you would turn down a free sundae, Yuri. You were certainly a fan of those cupcakes I brought in the other week. And that was... I mean, I was reading and not keeping track of them. Ah, oh, that's enough. We're getting off topic. So now that we have the gist of it, how about we try it with something more relevant to the club? Like manga, right? Let's try to have a productive discussion about our differences in opinion. Yuri, do you want to start? Um, well, I'd rather not, no. Ah, how come? Well, because... I don't see how anything productive can come from that. I'm just gonna start a fight. No, it'll be fine. That's why I'm here to moderate. Let's just have a calm and rational discussion. Yeah, give me a little more credit. I'm not a child. You don't have to cuddle my feelings. I always think it's more respectable to just speak your mind. Respectable? Yuri's expression changes at that word. As Monica recalls, being respected was the crux of the matter for Yuri. Well, the point of the exercise isn't exactly like, it's fine. I have nothing against anyone personally. You're entitled to enjoy whatever it is you like. I just perform more deep and nuanced in my reading material. I look for stories that are imaginative and sophisticated beyond the surface level. Oh, well that's just a misunderstanding then. I thought you were going to say that manga's for children or something like that. Like, I don't hear enough of that. But there's plenty of deep manga. I'm not clueless about manga. I've read my own fair share when I was younger. What? Are you serious? How come you never told me? Because I'm past that point in my life, and I really prefer not to revisit it. I prefer more mature things now. Excuse me? Okay, hold on. Can I jump in here? Let's try to keep things subjective. Because if you imply that manga is immature, then you aren't you implying that someone is immature for being into it? I... Well, maybe it's immature to just people for having different tastes than you. Natsuki? Nobody's immature. I've read Natsuki's mangas and Yuri's fantasy and I love them both in their own own way. Okay, okay. It's great that you like it, but I still find it boring. And boring isn't subjective. Okay, it bores me. That's subjective. But, I mean, the thing about... This is ridiculous. Do you see why I don't want to participate in this? 
I knew it was just going to make people upset. I'm not upset! Like I said, I don't care what other people think. But I always got the impression that you secretly looked down upon me. So I'm glad my suspicions were confirmed. Alright guys, follow the mouse. Oh, see, Yuri's pretty tall. Oh, Natsuki's kind of short there, huh? Hmm, I wonder why she would get the feeling that, like, Yuri's looking down on her. Just saying. That's not true at all. You're making assumptions. You can't blame me for getting defensive when nobody ever has the least bit of respect for the things that I'm into. The only thing I look down upon is when people make fun of me for just being myself and trying to mind my own business. What? Have you looked in a mirror? Tell me again about respect after calling all of my interests immature. You can't. Please stop. Please? You don't mean the things you're saying right now. Let's just be friends. I didn't mean for this to happen. Well, it did. So please don't invite yourself to try and solve other people's problems next time, okay? Ah! Damn! Sheesh! Yuri's piercing words send the club room into a choked silence as she gathers her things. She leaves. Holy crap. I've never heard her sound like that before. She must be so pissed. Well, you weren't very nice either, so... I was just saying. How did this happen? It's my fault. Yuri wasn't wrong. I shouldn't have tried to moderate a conflict when I know how bad I am at dealing with conflicts. Again, you're in the debate club, bro. It's kind of weird how it's turned into this. It's like, the moment she leaves the debate club, she's just sh** at, like, actually organising proper debates. It was a really stupid thing for me to do. It's nobody's fault, and it wasn't stupid. Everyone in the club is a nice person. Nobody would have expected this. But I guess we're sensitive about the things we really love. Honestly, she kind of brought it upon herself. Like I said, I don't care if you're not into manga, but if you actually look down on other people for it, that's kind of the point I was trying to make in the first place. It's not about sugarcoating things, it's just about recognizing and understanding our differences. Okay, but here's the thing about that. Yuri actually looks down on me. It has nothing to do with her word choice or anything like that. So I see what you were trying to do, but I really think the problem here is her. Not just like the way we talk to each other, right? I mean... Yuri isn't like that. She's a lot sweeter than you're giving her credit for. I'm sure she'll be reflecting on this. I actually think everyone should. It'll be fine. I'll figure something out. Wow, I'm just like saying that instinctively. I'm just setting myself up to cause more problems. This wasn't your fault, Monica. You don't have to beat yourself up over it. If you ask me, it's good the truth finally came out. Because I can just move on now. But it's fine, I promise. Let's just get our minds off this, okay? In fact, it's a good opportunity to read some manga without having to worry about feeding your superiority complex. Don't be mean. I'll talk or read manga or whatever you want. But don't be mean to my friends, okay? Sorry. I'm just bitter. Everything will be okay. I mean, I don't have the answer, but I at least know that we're all good people and don't want to hurt each other. This will be a learning experience. Marka says that, but her uneasiness is given away by how much she has to force the reassuring tone in her voice. This was bound to happen eventually. Natsuki and Yuri have always engaged with each other, the least out of everyone, and this is the reason. As Yuri and Natsuki proceed to distract themselves with manga, Monica sighs to herself, unable to shake her worried thoughts. Will the club really have to just come to terms with the fact that some members will be incompatible with each other? Monica desperately doesn't want to admit that, and she knows Sayori doesn't either. But for once, the solution doesn't seem to be in sight. A new day arrives. Sayori arrives at the club room earlier than usual. That is, not late. As she enters, it appears to be still empty. So she sits down at the desk and pulls out a sheet of paper primed to jot down her thoughts. Sayori has made a bit of a habit of scribbling her thoughts and feelings onto paper when it, when it, yeah, Jesus, whenever possible, as it tends to serve as her best inspiration for poetry. My heart feels vacant because the ship sailed away. Yo. Ah! Natsuki? Natsuki pokes her head out from behind the closet door. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. It would have been a lot more awkward if I didn't say anything. I doubt you want me listening in on your poetry thing. Yeah, thanks for realizing that. Should I let you finish that up then? Oh uh, no, I wasn't. I mean, I just do it whenever it's convenient. You're not interrupting. Where's Monica, by the way? Oh, she's out in the hallway. Huh? Why? Well, just in case she runs into Yuri. Sometimes Yuri is too nervous to come into the club room by herself, so... Oh. Jeez, did Yuri really let things bother her for that long? She can't control her feelings. For some people, it's really hard to cope when you get a bad thought in your head. Maybe you can distract yourself for a little while, but as soon as it's just you and your thoughts again, it comes back. Mm. 
Um, I just want us to have a normal club meeting. It's a lot easier to pretend like it never happened if we all just ignore it and move on. I don't want to be bothered by this. It's so stupid. Her opinion to me doesn't matter anyway. Besides, it makes me feel really guilty and I hate that too. It's okay to have feelings. It doesn't make you weak. Let's figure this out together. Fine. Only because you're good at this stuff. Let's try to come up with a happy scene. Maybe that will help us understand where your bad feelings are coming from. Well, I was happy the way things were before we had to have that conversation yesterday. What part of the conversation made you upset? Was it Yuri being mean about the manga? Maybe. I doubt it though. Because my friends and other people make fun of manga all the time, but I just brush it off and ignore them. But something about it really got to me this time, and I hate that I'm letting that happen. Is it because it came from Yuri? No? Why would that matter? I mean, well, maybe. I just, I hate that she thinks she's so much better than me. Just because she likes to pretend to be all sophisticated. Yeah, that's what it is. At least other people decide that they don't like me or manga or whatever. But Yuri acts like she's too good to even give it a chance. I'm sorry. Everyone deserves a chance. Yeah, exactly. Would you give Yuri's book a chance? Huh, after this, obviously not. And what about before this? Well, I would until I got bored, which wouldn't take very long. But if you actually keep an open mind, then it's not hard to realize that a story can be deep and meaningful without being needlessly complicated. I see. But you know, I like Yuri's books too. Yeah, but you like manga more, right? So Yuri shakes her head. I like them both. I like them in different ways, but I like them both. I mean, the manga, it's really honest and fun and easy to just let go with. And the fantasy is a lot to interpret and uncover, and it's really rewarding to have some good quiet time together with it. But the most important thing about both of them, well, that both manga and fantasy are true to themselves. So I love them both. And I think there's room for both of them to be in the same club together. And I just feel like maybe, maybe they have more in common than you would think. Oh my god, why do I have to hiccup in the middle of a f recording? How do you get along with everyone so well? I always get into fights with people. Like first it was with Monica when I was new to the club. Then it was with you, and now it's Yuri. And I'm like, oh, that person is being such a jerk, and if they just realized that, then we could at least get along. But nobody else has this problem. I just keep running away from the reality that everyone's just a jerk to me because nobody likes me. And I don't know why, and I don't know what to do about that. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hate it. Natsuki. So Yuri puts a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. Natsuki, nobody cares. You're a wonderful person. You deserve to be loved as much as everyone else. Everyone has different ways they like to communicate, you know? And sometimes that makes it harder for us to understand each other. I think that sometimes, sometimes we get lucky and we make friends who are really good at the same kinds of communication. And it feels like you magically connect with them. But other times, even both people are really nice. It's easy for them to misunderstand each other or to get the communication wrong. It's something that Yuri struggles a lot with too. It can be really hard. It takes a lot of reflection and self-awareness. And vulnerability. I'm bad at that one. Vulnerability. I always have to be the strongest. What do you mean? Tell me about that part of you. Well, it sounds stupid, but I'm really used to people being mean to me. Like my friends and I guess my dad. Like when I don't get good grades or even stupid things like if my room isn't clean. So what am I gonna do, cry about it? If I let myself get upset, then it's just letting them win. I'm better than that. I'm better than all of them. So things always have to be everyone else's fault. It feels like if something goes wrong and there's even a tiny hint that it might be my fault, then I just get really angry and I find ways to blame everything else instead. Do you see yourself better than Yuri? If I said that, then I would just sound really full of myself. No, our thoughts and our feelings are two different things. Even if we don't like our feelings, we have to understand them if we want to learn more about themselves. That's a part of vulnerability, you know? Accepting that we have feelings that we don't like. I... I hate it. My feelings make me a bad person. Because my feelings just want to tell me that I'm so much better than her. That she's a judgmental know-it-all who's stuck in her edgy phase and that I'm just way above that garbage. But I'm terrible for feeling that way. You're not terrible. You are not your feelings. But you are not your feelings. Say that to yourself out loud. Fine. I am not my feelings. The way that I like to picture it is that those feelings are like your roommate. If you live in the same house, you gotta see each other every day. And even if you can ignore each other most of the time, you're gonna run into each other every now and then. And it's gonna make you feel like poo. So the other 
option is to get to know each other. You can communicate and learn from each other and maybe even help each other change for the better. Does that help you understand? How do you know so much about this stuff? I just have a roommate that can be really hard to get along with. Jesus. Called depression. Depression? But like, you're like the happiest person I know. I am not my feelings. I want to be a good person like you. Aw, you little sweetheart. We're all good people. You and Yuri and Monica. And I think Yuri will eventually learn that about you. If I'm being real, I didn't even think that, like, say Yuri was going to straight up just say I have depression to Natsuki as well. Natsuki remains silent, feeling a little overwhelmed. Despite Sayuri's kind reassurance, a complicated mixture of pain and sadness seems to fill her, as though flowing from a wound inside her. Was it a result of her vulnerability? No. It wasn't as though she was inflicted a wound after becoming vulnerable. It was as though she began to read discover an old wound. One that cannot simply be bandaged and left alone any longer. Oh, a new scene! Let's go! We saw this at like the start of these episodes. Yuri, what are you doing all the way over here? I was looking for you. Uh, please don't yell at me. Oh, I'm not gonna yell at you. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. It was unfair for me to put everyone on the spot like that. Next time I won't just try to jump in and solve everyone's problems. I guess it's a bad habit of mine. You're not mad at me? I thought you were the one mad at me. I was so awful yesterday. Yuri curls up recalling the details of the argument. I can't even have a normal conversation without saying something wrong and making everyone upset. Hold on, that's not what happened at all. Let's talk about this, okay? Yuri pauses for a second and manages to a nod. Monica takes a seat next to her on the staircase. I'm having a lot of negative thought patterns and I can't get away from them. What kinds of negative thought patterns? Like everyone hates me, especially Natsuki. Oh, that's terrible. I don't think Natsuki hates you. How do you know? Well, because... Monica thinks back to the time that she herself found herself in an altercation with Natsuki. And how a display of maturity for Monica was enough for Natsuki to reevaluate her own feelings as well. I think... I think Natsuki is just naturally defensive. I think she asks me when she feels the need to protect herself. But you know, she's really not a bad person. In fact, I think she can be really thoughtful and considerate. She's just... Well, I guess the way it works is that she wants to receive some degree of kindness first before she feels comfortable returning it. Oh, but that means the burden is on me. And I don't know how to say things that make people like me. Every time I open my mouth, I just... Yuri shakes her head at herself and tugs on her hair. It's okay, Yuri. You don't need to beat yourself up over it. I think anyone would like you if they had the chance to get to know you. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is true. That's why I'm not talkative anymore in the first place. Because everyone used to think I was weird and talk about me behind my back. That's just what happens when I draw attention to myself. Natsuki even said she found it more respectful when people speak their mind. So I did, and she hated me anyway. That was enough to confirm my fears. But, but Sayori and I like you, and we've gotten to know you a lot by now, right? Um, Yuri doesn't seem to have a response. Hey, what do you think of Natsuki? I, I don't think about her. That's not what I mean, really. Uh, I just... Um, I was just wondering if you had an opinion of her. I do. What is it? Natsuki seems to bring out the worst in me, and I feel ashamed of it. I like to think of myself as a fairly sophisticated person. So for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior despite my tastes, that's just the worst kind of insult coming from someone like her. And it makes me think bad things about her. But everyone else seems to like her, so the only explanation is that it's me who's doing something wrong again. And my feelings about her are wrong. And I'm wrong to get upset over something so childish and inconsequential. No, Yuri. Feelings are never wrong. Well, they're not right. That's the thing. Feelings are never right or wrong, you know? They're just... they're just a state of being that we don't always have control over. But that doesn't mean they have to control us. I feel like that's something I learned around when I first started the club. We can hate ourselves for feeling a certain way about things, or we can, you know, just acknowledge that they exist and try to understand them better. I could never be mad at you for just feeling a certain way. It's about how you handle them. And I think working through your feelings is a great opportunity for teamwork. Yuri wears a dejected expression. You make it sound so easy. You're so mature, and so good with people. 
I feel like such a child in comparison. Oh Yuri, I'm far from perfect. But these are skills. They don't come naturally to me either. It's really hard to like reflect on yourself and separate your feelings from your thoughts. I just want to be a good person. Well, I think it takes a good person to get this far. That's not good enough. I want to be able to communicate with her. Communicate what? How I feel. How it makes me feel frustrated and upset when she's so negative and dismissive of things that meant so much to me. And how it... How it reminds me of me. Because I know what it's like to feel misunderstood and angry at everyone. I know that telling yourself you're better than everyone else is just a defense mechanism. We're just people. We're fragile and unstable. But I am just tired of that getting in my way. I can't stand it when the piece is disturbed like this. Yeah, you can't focus on your reading when the piece is disturbed, right? Because I... because... The Literature Club should be happy for everyone. Malka looks at Yuri in adoration. I feel like Sayuri must be rubbing off on me. Because I really want to hug you now. Um... <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. No, um... I mean... Well, if you wanted to, then I wouldn't really mind, so... Marco pulls Yuri into a short embrace. You're so gentle, and I love when you communicate your feelings. I feel lucky to get to see that side of you, and I'm sure Natsuki will too. I'm going to write her a letter. Oh, a letter! What a great idea! Just because I'm not good at talking, especially under pressure. I always let my feelings get the best of me, and I forget to say all the important things, and I say things I don't mean. Well, I think a letter would be wonderful. Such a nice way to communicate. Yuri's face hardens with determination. People don't naturally gravitate towards me like they do for you and Sayori. My personality just isn't suited for that, and I wouldn't want it to be. But something I've learned is that friendship don't always just magically appear out of thin air. For instance, I never would have seen myself making friends with someone like Sayori. We're opposites in a lot of ways, but I'm friends with her because she puts so much effort into understanding me so that we can get along. I think it was the same with you. You both gave me a lot of time and patience. And I wonder if... if she feels the same way. Natsuki? Yuri nods. I always thought that if I wanted to make more friends, I had to be somebody that I'm not. That there's a type of person or a magical formula I have to follow in order to make someone like me. And that's just like me to think that. Always so occupied with myself that I fail to understand other people. Yuri shakes her head. Friendship happens when you think about the other person. When you offer time and effort to understand them and respect them and trust that, that they always want to be a good person. That's what I learned through my observations in the literature club. Observations? Malka is caught by surprise. Yuri's always kept to herself so much that it's so unusual to hear her suddenly talk about the club like this. But Yuri gently smiles to herself. You always let me listen to your thoughts about people. Sayuri too. And it makes me happy because I learn a lot of things. That's so sweet. I had no idea it meant that much to you. Malka never thought of it much. But in the past weeks, Yuri always seemed to be especially attentive when it came to the problems and concerns of others. Always wanting to listen and learn more about her friends in the club. It's true, Sayori and Monica are naturally more comfortable with other people and can more easily work through situations of conflict, but that doesn't make them better people. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses that have the capacity to improve, and the first step towards improving oneself is reflection and self-awareness. It's something that Yuri never gave herself enough credit for, but Monica can recognize that incredible trait. And with that, her confidence in the club is restored. A very shy girl with long pretty hair is wandering the bustling lunchtime hallways, her fists pressed into her collarbone. When she finds the literature club president's room, she stands at the door, glancing all around her before peering inside. Monica is sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Yeah, as expected, this was a bad idea after all. Suddenly Monica glances towards the door, making the girl panic and duck out of sight. Before she can regain composure and decide for sure to leave, the classroom door gently opens. Yuri? What a surprise to see you during lunch. Yuri squeezes in response. Yee! Please help me. Why is everything okay? Yuri shakes her head. I don't know how to write letters. <laughs> Thank goodness. I thought there was some kind of emergency. Maka briefly glances over her shoulders at her other friends. Do you want some help? We can go find an empty classroom or something. Is that okay? I feel bad for taking you away from your friends. It's totally fine, I promise. We weren't really doing anything. One sec. Monica trots back into her classroom, say something like, I gotta go to her friends and then grabs a pen off her desk before returning to Yuri. Okay, let's find somewhere We're quiet. quiet. Yuri nods and follows Monica as the two of them set off. How are you today? Huh? Me? Well, yes. 
<laughs> oh gosh, sorry. I was just caught off guard. I'm doing well today. Just tired. I never seem to get enough sleep during the week. How come? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm just easy distracted. I get really sucked into things and start neglecting time. Me too. I do that too. <laughs> hey, this classroom is empty. Let's go in here. After praying inside, Monica opens a classroom door and the two of them enter. Oh man, this scene. Ah, it's the first scene of the school in the original game, man. Yuri's moment of relaxation ends. She watches Monica pull two chairs up from the same desk, then obeys as Monica beckons her to take a seat. She stares down an empty desk. You nervous? I don't want to do this. We don't. We don't have to. We can come up with something else. Yuri shakes her head. It's my chance to do something good. I need to take initiative. Gosh, she must be really determined. I know how hard it is for you to step out of your comfort zone. I'll be sure to encourage you. Yuri pushes through her anxiety and grabs a handful of lined paper from her notebook. Then she picks up her pen. Ah, look at this scene. I like how Monica has her like stereotypical pen as well. The classroom kind of looks like, well, I know it's meant to be a different classroom, but it's different design. Hey, you're left-handed. That's me. Uh, yeah. Now I don't have to worry about bumping into your arm. Monica playfully rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being silly, I guess. Anyway, how about we start by listing the different things you want to say to her? Um, Yuri thinks. I feel embarrassed all of a sudden. Oh, it's okay. How about some of the things you said to me yesterday? But, never mind, I guess I'll try. Yuri thinks for a moment longer, her tension evident. Then she writes the word reflection. This is about my reflection on our behavior. The key question is why we act like this towards each other, but have been able to separately be friends with Sayori and Monica. That's me. Yes, it is. So, Yuri thinks. I've been able to befriend the two of you because you've taken the time to understand my needs and respect my interests. Hmm. The same goes for Natsuki too. We started off as pretty hostile to each other because I was so worried about getting what I wanted, but she just wanted to be respected more than anything else. Once I stopped making it all about me, she was able to do the same thing. I want to do that too. So what kind of things do you want to do for her? I want I want to do the same things for her that I'd like to receive. I like it when people respond positively to the things I talk about and not just brush me off. I like it when my feelings are taken seriously. And I like when you and Sayori trust that I want to be a good person even when I'm not doing a good job at it. Let's write those things down. Okay, Yuri writes some things down. I think the most important thing to remember here is that Natsuki is feeling vulnerable. So we should make sure that the letter put puts her first. It's hard when you're feeling hurt, but it never helps to just tell someone all the things that they're doing wrong. I think first you have to make sure that they don't, that they know you're ready to respect them and listen to them and admit the things that you feel you could do better. Then finally, you ask what you would like in return. How does that sound for the structure? It could be three paragraphs, one for each of those points. I like it. My thoughts were so disorganized. I had no idea how to come up with any kind of structure. You're so amazing at these things. Oh, stop. You've done so much more than I have, you know? you spend so much time reflecting and being open-minded. That's the hardest thing for anyone to do. All I'm doing is helping you put it on a piece of paper. So I think you're the amazing one. Um, Monica gives Yuri's hand a quick squeeze. But as she lets go, she's caught by surprise as Yuri curls her fingers to hook Monica's hand in place. For a while, they sat like that in silence, save for the occasional scratching of Yuri's pen against the paper. Yesterday, you told me something that I'm thinking about a lot. What was that? The thing about how feelings aren't right or wrong, and that they're just a state of being we need to come to terms with. It made me think about how a person's behaviour isn't always just how they decide to be. It's also made up of their past experiences and their insecurities. I think that helps me see other people as actual people, rather than as insignificant side characters who are out to get me somehow. Is that how you feel about Natsuki? Yuri nods. But in reality, everyone is always trying their best, and everyone wants to be happy. Mike appears over at Yuri's paper, but to her surprise, Yuri pulls it closer, partially covering it with her arm. <laughs> I have to be able to read it out to help you, you know? It's okay. My thoughts are a lot more organized now, after being able to talk to you about it. Now that I'm actually putting it on paper, I realize I prefer others not to read it. Yuri laughs softly to herself, a rare expression. I'm kind of glad to hear that, actually. I somehow keep finding ways to butt into this whole thing. I've done enough damage. <laughs> but it's also been so wonderful talking about this. I mean, I always thought you were really smart, but... Yuri smiles. I will always be terrible at these things. People are just so incomprehensible to me. 
I'll never get the hang of being one. <laughs> but listening to you so much has really helped me make sense of some things. So just don't call it damage, please. Marka gives Yuri a gentle smile. I can't believe I came to this club looking for fantasy geeks and all I got was real friends who value me. Is that a joke? Of course it is. <laughs> I still can't tell with you. Sorry. No, I love it. Please never change. As you wish. Yuri glances at the clock. We're almost out of time. Will you be able to finish? Before for the end of the day, probably. But I don't want to come to the club the same day that Natsuki reads it. I'm too shy. I can give it to her instead if you'd like. Yuri nods. As long as you promise not to read it. Of course, I promise. Thank you. Yuri exhales and the two stand up. I'll message you when it's ready. Monica nods. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. Yuri returns a nod and the two depart. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki with Monica's help. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Natsuki haven't faced each other since then. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether it's good or bad. And because the passing by of students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. Because this staircase is under maintenance, no student would have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of a frantic school day. Uh, uh, what are you doing here? Um, I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. Well, what are you doing here? I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. The other one is out of drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seems to reverberate through this entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets with in place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Natsuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant really. I mean, it's totally cool that it's your thing or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you. So not because I think you're creepy or something. I didn't mean that either. You know, I'm just gonna stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammering herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap off for a drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. And the two of them just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes. Even without any word, this seems to mean at least something. Though it's not clear what that may be. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Natsuki is the first to stand up with her empty drink ball. Are you coming today? To the club? Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. It's the next day. Natsuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. Today she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. Well, I just came here to read this because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't, but there's no people here. I see. Natsuki sits down. The mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Natsuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other again. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. Especially since, like, they all just assume I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly, but I just don't want to come up again now after I've waited for so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. You don't have other friends who are into manga? Not unless online friends count. And Sayori, but that's different because she's not exactly into it she just likes it you know what i mean <laughs> honestly you're lucky that the books you're into at least 
look like books so you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. That would be so awful. Especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already. If you're like me and have no one to share your hobbies with, well, I have online friends. Since middle school, actually. I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like the me from a few years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Oh, whatever. Well, we were all stupid kids back then anyway. Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used Pistonium. But I liked it at the time. I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> Probably. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me. Especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Um, alright, here. Natsuki raises her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. That's me from the future coming to terms with me right now. Also, ow, I didn't mean to hit myself so hard. Yuri doesn't seem to react. But then, to Natsuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns red and stares into her lap, but is unable to hide a smile as though it was a really funny joke. Ah, oh, that's what I'm talking about! I didn't know you had it in you. I... I don't. I don't even know why I did that. Maybe I thought it would be funny? But sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading, but I kept going on about all this nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Alright. Yeah, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly and Natsuki opens her book. The two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour, but the whole time Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced uh, the end of their conversation. You're back? Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandering to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly notices a bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. What, like for me? But you didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? Well, I just, I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it, it wasn't stupid. I just thought, never mind. What I meant to say is thank you. And that, it's a really nice gesture. It's okay if you don't feel that way. I do! It was the other things that I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Um, Yuri pauses then nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot too. So I believe you. Natsuki exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that Natsuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please, don't feel obli- I want to! I want to do nice things too. Okay, thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it then too, Natsuki sighs. Um, nothing. It just reminds me of how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. They're just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. Like being around them when we're all just having fun, but they also just can't take anything seriously. So when I'm, I don't know, feeling serious, then their attitudes just really get on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with it, because it would be so stupid to cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just, I have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not gonna demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know. Mark and Sayori really don't agree with that kind of thing. But they're not in my position, so it's easy for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings or whatever. It's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. I'd just be making an embarrassment of myself. I'm sorry, none of this has anything to do with you. I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What, listening to other people's problems? Yes. By the way, if you haven't noticed, my Natsuki voice is already gone. I don't even know why I decided to re-record today. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Sorry. 
I just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, that's not weird. I probably just misunderstood, so I don't know. Does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay, well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things that you like about your friends? A lot. <laughs> Man, oh my god, you can hear me struggling to pull the voice. A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with, like, after school and on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot, and we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh, I'm bad at a lot of those things. So? Are those all things that are important to you? Well, kind of. But they're not things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that. But I'm still friends with them too. Well, Sayori so really likes your baking. And she makes you laugh. And she complains a lot. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Oh, God. Oh, oh, Yuri, calm down. Stop it. Excuse me? How about you don't talk that way about my friends that you don't know anything about? Natsuki stands up. No, wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. Natsuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you understand that you can't just judge people like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki sits back down. You just can't compare friends like that and, like, measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. I just... I just don't like people who want to hurt you. Ah. A moment of silence stretches between them. They don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry about me so much. It's not worth it. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Not really. Also, I don't always want help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Sayuri never seem to understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're all like, Ah, oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes and decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So, you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. Thank you. You're also nice. It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who just can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed or upset. Or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that, I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Natsuki notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons. But I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive, like, I want to be part of it. I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to following social conventions and the group interactions. I just don't really understand it and I have no desire to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with real people. So, in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. Really? It's that hard for you to be around people? Like, all the time? Mm, fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversation and saying jokes and all that, I don't know what to do and I just disengage. Oh, that doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I could still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one, -on -one, and I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever... Do you ever wish that you could be friends with the characters in your books? All the time. Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah, me too. Really? Um, a lot. Like, more than anything. After Natsuki mutters that, silence falls in the staircase once more. But it's a mutual silence. One full of understanding. Oh, man. I don't even know if I can keep doing the voice, but my, my voice is so... Like, my voice box is so... Self-love part two. Hey. Oh, hello. I almost thought you weren't coming today. Yeah, well... Lunch is already more than halfway over. Natsuki had typically been meeting Yuri in the staircase much earlier, since it had been a good way of dodging her friends when she didn't feel like seeing them. Today she's holding a large plastic container in both hands. I ran into my friends, so I hung out with them for a while. 
Is that so? Yeah, I was in a good mood today, so I figured I should. I hadn't seen them in a while, which I had to come up with an excuse for, but I expected that. Plus, I have way more of these than I know what to do with, so I figured I would share the share with them too. So I figured I would share with them too! As she sits down, Natsuki opens the lid of her container. You made cupcakes. You know it! It's been a while at this point, so I figured it was about time again. You can take one if you want. Yuri takes a cupcake and carefully twirls it between her fingers. It's brown with dark green frosting, immaculately shaped into a floral pattern, and topped with some kind of glittery powder. How pretty. I just said, uh, so I may not be able to finish it. Are they for the club? Yeah, I guess so. I didn't really think about it, I just made them. Ah, uh, I just thought that because green is Monica's favourite colour, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really... Yuri takes a small bite. This is green tea. Flavoured. I love green tea. Oh, you do? It was just a random idea I wanted to try, so... <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm... I'm not. I just felt happy. Oh, sorry. Usually when... Never mind. What I mean is that I'm glad. Sorry for saying dumb things again. I just wanted to do something nice. And this is something I happen to be good at. And I do know that you like them from past experience. Um... Yuri turns red, recalling the time she treated herself rather generously to Natsuki's cupcakes. Ironically, her mouth is too full of cupcake for her to stammer an excuse, so she just settles for a disapproving look. How did you get into baking? I don't know, was it in a manga by any chance, Natsuki? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. It kind of just always appealed to me. Well, a few years ago, I read this one manga with a lot of baking, so I got, like, super into it for a while. I was probably making stuff almost every day, but it's something that I always knew I liked anyway. It's like, baking is like art, but when you get good at it, it becomes more delicious. I'm struggling to imagine myself putting my heart into something so artistic, knowing that it would just be eaten afterwards. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're too practical for it. I think I prefer to be on the receiving end. That's my other favourite part about it. It's something I can do that makes a lot of people happy, like, unconditionally. Everyone is always so thankful, and in that moment, you get to be, like, the bringer of joy. I don't know, it just makes me feel valued. Yeah, I guess that. So, you were able to make up with your friends today? Um, it wasn't really anything to make up with them about. We weren't fighting or anything. You weren't? Maybe I misunderstood. It only turns into a fight if I lose my cool. And that's just unnecessary drama. It only makes things worse. So, they're not going to stop? I mean, it only happens sometimes anyway. It's just the way they are, and I'm the only one who ever has a problem with it. It's not worth it. Especially since I have somewhere to go now, when I don't feel like hanging out with them. Oh, I see. The cupcake's empty foil wrapper audibly crinkles as Yuri clenches her fist. I'm glad that the situation is resolved, and that you don't have to avoid them anymore. Yeah, me too. And I don't have to bother you during your alone time anymore. I'm sure you have a lot of reading to catch up on. Yeah, I know that the cupcake are basically nothing compared to all the stuff you've done for me, but it's the best I can do. So, you can have the rest of them. Natsuki grabs the box and slides it over to Yuri's feet. Yuri stares at the box. Then she shakes her head and slides them back. You should save them for your other friends. But I made them for you. Natsuki's voice whines as she protests. I know, and I like them very much, exactly as you thought. You succeeded, but I know you care about making your other friends happy too. And if this is the way you know how to make that happen, then I'm not going to take it from you. No, they were for making you happy. You make me happy. You're worth more than cupcakes to some people. That's why they want to spend time with you and be your friend. Without warning, tears pour from Natsuki's eyes. She pulls her knees to her chest and starts sobbing into her arms. Natsuki? I'm such a bad person. Uh, um... Yuri stammers feeling panicked. I didn't mean to say anything bad. Natsuki shakes her head and wipes her eyes. You didn't... I just... Natsuki tries to choke back her sobs but struggles to speak through them. I just really hate myself sometimes. And it feels so wrong when you say those nice things to me. Like, I don't deserve it. I'm sorry. No, I am. I'm so difficult. And I can't think of even a single thing about myself that somebody would like. And I hate myself for bothering you during lunch. I just thought it was my chance to be a good person. 
like to be nice and to do things you wrote about in that letter. I knew I tried in the club. Sayori and Monica would be super annoyed and make a huge deal out of it. You know, I think a lot of those negative things too about myself. I never felt like a good person. I always scrutinize everything I say. And later I feel like I said all the wrong things. And I just spend so much time thinking about myself, hating myself and feeling like everyone else must hate me too. So I understand some of that through my own experience. And that's why I wanted to write the letter and express my feelings. It pained me to see those things in someone else that I saw in myself. Natsuki sniffles. Jerry rustles through her bag and pulls out some tissues, then hands them to Natsuki. Monica told me that it takes a good person to reflect on these things. The desire to improve yourself that makes you a good person, so don't worry so much. Also, there are things about you that people would like so... Like what? Like... Like how you're fun for people to be around. And you're not shy. And you know how to make people laugh. And you're very passionate about things, and you know how to take the lead. And you care a lot about other people. And just a lot of things. Oh, well, now you're making me feel really embarrassed. Well, you're the one who asked. Uh, don't you think I feel embarrassed? Natsuki tries to hide a smile, and then sighs as it fades again. Every time I come here, I always think it's the last time, but then I keep coming back for some reason. Is that bad? Just really confusing. I mean, my friends and I go way back, so ditching them all the time feels like... I don't know. It feels like what? Natsuki's voice gets quiet. M maybe I'm scared that they'll get mad at me. Hmm, I really don't know what to do. She pauses. Yuri stares into the distance, tracing her eyes along the patterns of the floor tiles while she thinks to herself. What would you do hypothetically if your friends were happy for you instead of mad at you? Happy for what? Happy that your new club is making you happy. Well, that's just not a fair hypothetical. Natsuki says that with a little confidence in her voice. I always told myself that I don't rely on approval of others to be happy. And I still feel that way, but I'm spending time with people who put me down whenever I don't have their approval. That's probably what's making me feel so confused. Because I'm threatened out of the things that should make me happy. So no matter what, it's like I have to be unhappy to be happy. It's making my head hurt. That must make it really difficult to feel comfortable with yourself. Being made to feel like you're wrong just for being the person you are? It really goes against everything I believe in, doesn't it? It goes against the kind of person I want to be. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with a lot of things. Natsuki presses her palms into her forehead and shakes her head. I know what's best for me, but I keep convincing myself out of it. It's so much easier to be comfortable and happy than it is to do something so scary. And to do what? You know, to end it. With them? Natsuki nods. I didn't think you were acting considering that as an option. I wasn't until recently. It's just one of those things where like it's been a certain way for so long that you just get used to it. Like so much of you has gone into it. So much that it feels like that's just how your life is. And throwing it away is like throwing away such a big part of your life. It makes me feel sick to think about. Natsuki sighs. It's just really scary. It's terrifying. What are you scared of? I don't know. A lot of things. Like being alone. Not having anyone to talk to or hang out with. Not being able to replace what I have with them. And I don't want them to hate me. And I'm scared they'll hurt me for going against them. Physically? Not physically, but... Yuri clenched her fists. Natsuki. What? If anyone even thinks to cause you harm... I will, I will unleash, unleash hell upon them. Natsuki snorts in laughter. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Sorry, I was just... I like that. That's all. Oh, well I meant it. I know you did. Natsuki gives Yuri an endearing look. I needed it. Um, as the conversation lapses, Natsuki again slides her box of cupcakes over to Yuri. Just take them, okay? I don't, I don't want other people to have them anymore. Are you sure? Natsuki nods. I'm sure. I will then. I'll enjoy them. Natsuki looks away, but a feeling of warmth spreads through her. She holds on to that feeling, knowing it will give her courage. Ah, you're here first today. Um, and you brought reading material. Mm-hmm. Natsuki is sitting in her usual spot, this time holding a volume of manga while her lunch sits behind her. Yuri sits down as well and opens her own book. It sucks when a good series has to come to an end. Like, it's such a big part of your life, and then one day, there's just nothing left. Me, I don't know why, but that that just hit me in the feels. Holy sh! <laughs> That's so true, man. You just watch a show or like know a show, or you've been watching it for so long, and then it's out. Like basically, the last time I felt that is when I watched Naruto, like the full like Naruto binge, man. Holy. Sh
Like, the day I was on the final episode, I was like, man, I'm finally glad this is over, but it's so weird that it's gone now. It makes you feel so empty. Unfortunately, I'm about to experience that myself. I'm on the last book of this series, and that sucks. But there's also something satisfying about letting a story conclude. I don't know if I'd want it to go on forever. Maybe. But there are some things that I wish I could. On the other hand, have you ever read something that overstayed its welcome? Yeah, definitely. I can think of at least one thing that I've read that got pretty unbearable like halfway through. And the ending really sucked. So it sucks when something good has to end. But it also sucks when it just keeps inventing more plot until you don't like it anymore. I guess it sucks either way. Um, well, that's the nature of all things. They come to an end. The two fall silent. They solely eat while making making their way through their respective reading material. Except Natsuki doesn't seem to be touching her food at all. You don't go out during the weekends, right? Excuse me? Like, with friends at the mall or downtown or whatever? I'm not a total shut-in, you know? Oh, my bad for making assumptions. Well, I'm sure I go out less often than other people, like you and the others in the club. I don't really meet with friends and, and arbitrarily spend time like that. I'm usually meeting with my board game group. Board game group? It doesn't matter. It's just more nerdy stuff. Why do you ask anyway? I was just curious. I just realized that I couldn't picture it, so I was just curious. Yuri looks at Natsuki and realizes that she's shaking. Don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki pulls her knees into her chest and puts her head down. I can't take this. D did I do something? Yuri gets flustered, her mind racing over what she may have said or done. I did. I ended it. I texted them earlier telling them, and then I just blocked them because I'm so afraid of their responses. And now it feels like I'm dying inside. Oh, that's... I'm sorry. Totally unsure of what to do, Yuri can barely find any words to support to offer. Meanwhile, the sound of Natsuki's unusual hard breathing fills the air. Then she speaks again, barely above a whisper. Help me. I feel sick and I want to hit my head against things. Please, I can't take this. You may be having a panic attack. With the realization, Yuri's demeanor suddenly changes. I, I have experience with this, so I'll help you through it, okay? Natsuki meekly nods through her rapid breathing, head still buried in her knees. Yuri slides herself over to Natsuki and sits on the step behind her. Then she puts her hands on Natsuki's shoulders. Can you feel my hands? Natsuki nods. Her shaking becomes much more apparent through Yuri's sense of touch. Yuri keeps her voice low and gentle. You're safe right now. You're in a good and safe place where nothing can hurt you. Natsuki nods once more. Although Yuri is the only one touching Natsuki's shoulders, she can practically feel her racing pulse through the base of her neck. We'll do breathing exercises together. All you have to do is listen to my breaths and breathe along with me. Let's breathe now. I'm sorry, but this is hitting way too close to home for me. This has happened to me a few times back in secondary where people I knew were, had panic attacks, man. So, I, I, like, I can actually picture this. It's, it's very, very... Like, you feel really awful for the person who's going through the panic attack. Like, man... Yuri takes a deep and slow breath. Beneath her hands, she feels Natsuki's shoulders rise as Natsuki takes a breath of her own, trying to mimic Yuri. They exhale together, although Natsuki's breath shakes on the way out. That's good. Let's keep going. Yuri breathes in once more, and Natsuki joins her. They continue like that for a few more cycles while Yuri closely monitors. Eventually, Yuri feels Natsuki rest more of her weight into Yuri's palms. Let's focus on the physical world. All you have to do is focus on the feeling of your breaths going in and out, and the weight of my hands on your shoulders. You're in a safe and comfortable physical space. Minutes pass in silence. By now the worst of it has passed, and but Yuri is determined not to move away until Natsuki prompts her to. Meanwhile, Natsuki has lifted her head off her knees and her breathing has mostly steadied. Then she takes a final deep breath and slowly pulls herself to her feet, causing Yuri to let go. She stretches her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak out. I don't know what my deal is. You don't have to apologize. This must be enormously stressful for you. Is that going to keep happening? It may, or it may not. We can take measures to help prevent it in the future, but I think it'll naturally get better over time. Natsuki motions to sit back down again, so Yuri moves over. Yuri turns away to pick up her book from the dusty floor, which she had hastily set down earlier. She brushes the dust off the cover. I don't think I could have gotten through that alone. You're not alone. Feeling shy again, Yuri speaks into her own lap. From now on, you don't have to do anything alone. 
As she says that, Yuri tenses up. It's rare for her to so openly share her thoughts. But something about Natsuki, of all people, makes it feel so much more natural to do so. Perhaps because, like Yuri, Natsuki is so timid and uncertain of herself. Natsuki does such a good job at hiding it that it's taken a long time for Yuri to finally realise it. And because of that, Yuri is able to deliver the reassurance that she herself would have wanted. Demonstrating that you deserve the love of others. If you can accept that for the first time, then perhaps you can begin the tremendous journey of learning to love yourself. Ah. Do you really mean that? You're probably going to regret saying that if you do. How so? Because I'm probably going to have a lot of free time during the weekends from now on. So you're giving me permission to be as annoying as I want to drag you around to a lot of places? I see. But you already said it, so you can't take it back now. Hmm. Well, I suppose I have no other choice but accept that responsibility then. Hmm. I know a good ice cream place. Oh? That means you'll finally figure out my favourite ice cream flavour. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't remember? The first day that you came to the club, you guessed everyone's favourite ice cream flavour, but for me, you said you had no idea. Seriously? I don't remember that at all. Oh, wait, yes I do. I said it was probably green tea. Yuri shakes her head. It's a good guess, but my favourite is usually to get a chocolate and raspberry together. Chocolate and raspberry? How fancy. How is that fancy? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I should have guessed something like that. Well, maybe next time I'll try chocolate and strawberry. Hey, strawberry is my favourite. <laughs> what a coincidence. I think it helps to have something to look forward to. I still have the sick feeling in my stomach, but it's easier now to convince myself that I did the right thing. Is there anything better I could be doing? Not that I know of. There's nothing that will make this easy for me. And you already did more than enough than anyone. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, we never talked about the letter you wrote. But I feel like we're way past that at this point. I don't even know what to talk about. Except that I think it helped me to understand my feelings a little better. The way I like to be treated. And the kind of friends I want to have. That's why I wanted to start coming here in the first place. Even though I was so scared of causing more problems. I thought it was a coincidence that you ran into me here initially. Oh, uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean? Nothing. I, I may have tracked you down first, with the help of Sayori. That's, but you said I was shy, okay? I wasn't ready to, like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Well, I guess I'm glad that you worked up the courage, even if it was in your own way. I can tell that you've been making a lot of difficult decisions. It's brave, and it will make things better in the long run. I think anyone would be proud of you for it. Anyone? You mean, like, you? Yes. Like me. You know, I could get used to this. As long as... As long as you don't tease me too much. Fine. Just a little then. That's fine. I know how uncertain everything feels to you right now, but I really do think that good things are in store. Those are my honest feelings. Thanks. It feels nice to be reassured. The two girls continue their conversation through the remainder of lunch. But a new feeling hangs in the air, a feeling of greater certainty in their path forward. In just a few hours, there will be another literature club meeting where the four club members will happily spend time together. Each of them, all with their own special qualities, have something unique that they can deliver to one another. Through friendship and literature, the club members will continue to grow and find new happiness together. The end of each chapter is the start of the next. Yuri thinks to herself. Since she's about to finish her long running series, it would be best to have a new book lined up. Perhaps this week would be a good time to visit the bookstore together. <laughs> ah, man, so wholesome. Let's get into it one final time. Okay, everyone, we're going to be taking a break from the usual activities today. I was thinking since people are starting to talk about the festival, it's a good time for us to go over the general direction of the club and all that. I think it'll help us figure out what to do for the festival, you know? Oh, Sayori and I already came up with a good plan. Really? For the festival? Yeah, so the plan is this, okay? You and Yuri collect information ahead of time on which clubs and classes are doing food booths. Then we take a map and plan the most efficient route so we can get the most of them before the line gets too long. Hey, that has nothing to do with the club. Well, he didn't let me finish. All right, fine, go ahead. Right, so basically we get all the food we can, then we come back here and we all eat together. That's all. Wow, I got tricked twice by the same joke. Boo. Don't be a hater. It's not like you can come up with anything better. Look, even Yuri was thinking about it. N no, I wasn't. I would really prefer to do something literature related. We can eat together any time. The festival is a unique opportunity. Besides, it's been quite a while since we've seen any new interest in the club. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We really get a shot at showing people what the literature club is all about. I'll tell you what, we could do both, right? We'll make time for your food mission and still put together a public event. Wait, do I hear a warsat dropping from orbit? Oh my gosh, yes! I was just joking, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> well, I'm glad that sells. I think the question is how to come up with an event that demonstrates everything you get out of the literature club. Well, that's kind of tough because everyone gets something different out of the club. Okay, how about this? Let's go around and have each of us talk about what we've gotten out of the club so far. That could really help us figure out what kind of reputation we want to build. Yeah! That's too embarrassing. Ah, but you don't have to talk much about it. That's exactly why. And I'm sure Natsuki feels the same way. Well, maybe, but I didn't plan on arguing against it or anything. I mean, the literature club, we talk about that stuff together, right? And the only way to get more comfortable with it is to suck it up and do it. Oh, you're not wrong. I'm sorry for being resistant. It's not good to say suck it up because it sounds like their feelings don't matter. Right, my bad. It's just a habit I need to break. Well, anyway, who's gonna start? I'll start. I was the first to join, after all. <laughs> Wouldn't that be me? No, I want to go first. Fine, fine. You can start. I don't mind. Yay! So, gosh, it feels like so long ago. I think I joined because I wanted to have fun sharing poems with people. It seems like it would be the safest way to express myself, you know? Like, if it's just a poem, then I can share it without feeling like I'm a burden to everyone with my problems. Problems. And I thought it'd be a really good way to get to know other people too. So yeah, I was really surprised when I walked in and it was just Monica and she was sleeping. <laughs> Don't remind me of that. Oh gosh. Yeah, but it seemed like so much fun to start a new club. Especially since writing helped me so much, I wanted to see it help other people too. But it ended up being me who was inspired, because I remember feeling like Monica was just so sweet and mature and that I couldn't trust her with anything. It made me feel a lot of less alone, having someone who knew even the bad things about me. And at that point, I knew the literature club was going to be special for a lot of people. Yeah, I felt the same way. It really helped me give the club a more cohesive vision. Yeah, and then Yuri joined, but she was so different from us. And Natsuki too. I think for Yuri, it helped for me to take the lead before she was able to open up a little. But Natsuki was kind of the opposite, where she wasn't ready to get really close to someone real quickly. I never really thought about that sort of thing. It really felt like I've gotten better with understanding people's needs. And that makes me really happy, because my friends are just the most important thing to me. And whatever new members we get, I want to help them in those ways too. I don't know if I would have continued coming to the club if it weren't for you. Really? Um, I know it wasn't too long ago, but it hurts to think about my behaviour back then. I was really short-sighted. The only reason I came was to find others who were into fantasy. I suppose that was my idea of making friends with people. And I remember feeling uncomfortable because you and I have such different energy. I had such a specific idea of the kind a person I could be friends with. So when Sayori tried so hard to get to know me, I felt like I was just wasting her time. I think I was too naive to assume that similar interests were the key component of friendship. Sayori and I were able to be friends because she always thinks about the needs of other people. That's something I never knew how to do, or even thought to do. But I stayed in the club, thanks to that, and I started trying as hard as I could to understand people better. You really went above and beyond when it came to that. I was just super impressed. Well, I always hated that I didn't know how to behave like a person who was easily liked by others, like the two of you can. And because of that, I spent so much time thinking about my own behaviour and all the wrong things I said. But the whole time, I should have been thinking about other people instead, not myself. Once I started doing that, I was able to make friends with everyone else. Oh, also, I discovered that sometimes I'm a better communicator when I take the time to write rather than speak. It's so strange the way things turned out. It's so far different from anything I have ever expected. But I'm happy. I suppose we don't always know what we really need. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You're so cute. I think I'm gonna throw up. Okay, please don't do that, Sayori. Besides, I'm not cute. Hey, isn't that my line? Oh, well, for me, it's actually true. True, so what are you saying? Nothing. I finished my part, so somebody else take their turn. My heart! Sayori, take some deep breaths. Okay, fine, I'll go. Yuri, I can't believe you were complaining about doing this and still went before me. What a show off. I was just 
following up on Sayuri. It was the easiest way to get it over with. Besides, you left out the most important thing that you can get out of this club. I did? Yeah, a regular supply of your favorite cupcakes. Oh no, I forgot that too. I'm a traitor to the cupcake queen. Neither of you are forgiven. Looks like only Monica will be getting cupcakes next time. No! I can't eat that many cupcakes. Yeah, true. Only Yuri can. Hey. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm just putting off talking. It's kind of hard to talk about this stuff. But I guess what it comes down to is that I'm in such a better place mentally than I was when I first joined. And that's because everyone helped me realize that I had some really toxic friendships going on outside the club. It was honestly a really painful thing to go through, having to cut them all out. It still hurts to think about. I'm sorry, Natsuki. It's fine. I knew it was for the best, and it was right. I guess for me, it's all about feelings. I was only ever ridiculed for having feelings, so I thought the right thing to do was just ignore them. It took me a really long time to realize that it's not really how things are supposed to work. And I guess that's thanks to everyone who took the time to respect my feelings, even when I was being like the biggest jerk. I'm really sorry for being such a jerk to everyone. I really was the worst. Natsuki's voice chokes a little. We love you, Natsuki. I just hate that I was like that. Everyone did so much for me, and I could never do anything in return. That's not true. Natsuki, you've done a lot more than you think. This club really wouldn't have been the same without you. I mean that. Remember how judgmental I was when you first showed up? It was like, I couldn't accept anything other than my own idea of what a literature club was supposed to be. Apparently that was more important to me than the opportunity to bring you some happiness. You really taught me that anything that makes someone happy is worthy of respect. You even inspired me to start playing piano. That's something that means a whole lot to me. So there's no need to put yourself down. Okay. Natsuki wipes her eyes. You help me a lot too. It's so much fun to have you around. And you help me become a better person. Having a problem doesn't make you needy or inconvenient. It means that there's something that needs to be better for you. And you always deserve that. I agree. Seeing us have some of the same struggles made me a better person as well. I wouldn't want to change anything about our time here. I don't think any of us would. I'm sorry, I got all dramatic again. That's all I wanted to say, so Monica, you can go now. There's no need to apologize. It was something I wanted to talk about anyway, because it made a big difference for me. I was always such a strict perfectionist, who never took enough time to believe in the best of other people. But everyone kept proving me wrong. I made the mistake multiple times thinking that my way was the best for everyone, or thinking that I was needed to solve other people's problems. But I think being a leader Either means that you have to acknowledge that you're not perfect and that the best thing you can do is to help guide people rather than to do everything for them. We're all good people. We're all equals. I think that's what's most important thing I've gotten out of the whole club. Realizing what that really means. <laughs> Sayori, what are you doing? I just thought that we should be writing some of these things down. Things about the club that are valuable to us. With a piece of chalk in her hand, Sayori writes the words trust on the chalkboard. This is because you've shown me that I could trust you with everything about me, not just my good side. Suddenly Yuri takes a piece of chalk as well. She writes, understanding. I I owe a lot of gratitude to everyone who took the time to understand me, even though it was so difficult for me to express myself. Um, in that case, Malika takes a piece of chalk as well and writes the word respect. I always thought I was a respectful person, but it took the club for me to realize that there's more to it than I thought, and I'm a better person because of it. I have another one! Sayuri so writes, balance. Sometimes people want different things out for friendship, or they need time before they're ready to become close. So it's important to keep things balanced between you and the other person. That reminds me. Yuri writes reflection. I've always been a reflective person, but most of it has been nothing more than hating myself for all the things I thought I did wrong. Once I started reflecting on other people, and not just myself, a lot of things changed for me. So I think that's the most important one for me. And that's great. We have a whole list of things now. Suddenly everyone looks at Natsuki. Well, everyone took all the chalk. Don't look at me like that. Sheesh. You could have just asked. Monica hands her a piece of chalk to Natsuki. Then Natsuki sighs and writes self-love. I don't know how far I've gotten with it yet, but it feels like things are at least on the right track. So there, that's my contribution. Together, everyone stares at the words on the board. Wasn't this club supposed to be about literature? It is! We still have a lot of literature. Friendship in literature. Yeah, you're right.
right. Friendship and literature. Natsuki and Yuri gently nod as well. Hey, let's all take a picture. We don't have one yet, right? Hey, you're right. Make sure you send it to me after. Wait, can I brush my hair first or something? Ah, oh, you're fine. You already have the best hair out of all of us. Um, everyone get together. I can't fit you all in. Okay. Okay, everyone ready? And click. Oh, are we not going to see the picture? Ah, here, come on, that's such a missed opportunity. I'm really glad we talked about this stuff. It's easy to forget how far we've come with only four members. Yeah, I have so many happy thoughts right now. I'm getting some really good inspiration for a poem. You know, I feel the same way. I kind of want to get some writing done. Me too! I think I would like that as well. Everyone's looking at me again. I'll do it too, but I might not feel like sharing it. That's okay. The four members of the literature club disperse and return to their desks, each equipping themselves with a pen. Natsuki and Yuri give each other a quick glance, then start writing immediately. Sayori stretches and does the same, but Monica is left tapping her pen against the paper, unsure of where to start. Just move your hand. Monica mouths to herself. Right the way into your heart. Her mind full of thoughts, memories and inspiration, Monica navigates past her mental barriers and begins to write. It doesn't matter what, just that it's something new. Oh. See, usually the background wouldn't disappear before a thing unless it was all glitchy. Oh man, hear the tune! Oh, that's it! Oh man! Oh, that's mad. It's so weird now just finally seeing the credits for this. They're very smooth looking, I must say. Yeah, sorry guys, I meant to say, but I worked on this game as well as the DT Plus uh, content programming definitely ah <laughs> oh, man hearing the tune remix is so weird ah i'm glad they used this in the outro because it makes sense as well because the old outro kind of used pictures that you uh got through the series as well and could have got ah it's making my heart ache just looking at them like this man say Oh, there we go. There's the DDLC Plus tune kicking in from the trailer. Again, we'll check out a few other things just before I put the series to rest for a bit. Because this is basically my last recording session with this game, unless there's other things that I'm missing majorly. Thank you, dear player, for enjoying our story of friendship and literature. No problem. Played with Love by Team Selvato. And Serenity Forge. I was about to say where they are. There's the picture! Let's go! I was like, yeah, there's no way they wouldn't, like, use the thing. Achievement unlocked. Friendship and literature. Right, so, pictures. Because obviously we got to use that picture we saw at the last bit of... Oh, we have two different ones. Everyone say cheese. And now make a funny face. <laughs> Let's just set it as that. So I think I'm just going to finally end this episode here. I won't say it's the finale, but I will say it's the final for now. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, obviously like it. Comment if you want, subscribe if you want, and hit the bell if you do so desire. This has been me playing Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, and I hope you guys have a good time.